<laughs> Are you ready? What? <laughs> hey what's going on andrew hey it's another week and uh, you know i'm really excited about tonight we have another great guest you're always uh, you're always excited. well it's dancing goat man it's nick you're you're always excited. i can tell already this is going to be a fun show guys so you're in for a real treat you're you're a happy little fella I once am. again well why, why wouldn't i be happy tuesday everybody cheers everybody. um Hope you all had a nice Hi, Easter. Uh, yeah, how was your Easter? It, it was, it was nice. Beach. Man, I was at the beach. I went yeah. down to the beach. We got Hell some yeah. good weather. You got the rain, didn't you? I got the rain at the beginning of the weekend. You got the sunshine. That's how it normally works. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I am a ray of sunshine. Yeah, sure you are. <laughs> uh, no, man, it was good. We had a good time. We, uh, you know, went out, uh, grabbed did. a bite. Family things, right? Family stuff. Uh, watched, watched the birds on TV a little bit, which was which was fun. Opening day. Suck it kicks and tail. Not gonna win them all, man. I'm not gonna win them yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. So, welcome to those of you who are hopping on. Yeah, let's like, share it out. Let's get like, more people let's in. Let's get some more people in here. This is gonna be a fun one tonight. Um, I think so. In the so, chat, if you have any dancing goats, let us know. Hopefully, you're drinking it with us. We're gonna go through a couple expressions. And if you don't know who they are, well, that's just, cool. That is uh, cool. You're gonna learn tonight. I a couple of years ago. I picked up uh, what I found out from Nick yeah, is an OG that bottle. That is OG. Here. Uh, older. That's probably um, what? Two or three years I, old? I don't know, dude. I got this a few years back. <laughs> you lose man. whiskey so quickly because well, you have yeah, so I get, much. Of I it. get lost in a sea of whiskey at my house. Mm. My wife gets mad. But I remember right. pulling this out and saying, God, this is really good. I hope I can find another offering and then grab one from Sealbacks. Yep. And uh, let's just say I have been a fan ever since. So, um, yeah. So, without further ado, let's bring up our friend yes. from. From the great state of Wisconsin, the Badger State. Let's Badger let's state. bring up Nick Moss from Dancing Goat Nicholas. Distillery. Wait, what's going what's on, going man? What's going on, Nick? I'm not gonna Thanks give you for having me. Typical oh, applause. Sorry, I can. I can. Yeah, get that. He does roll it. Roll it's a little oh, late on cue. Yeah. 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 It goes for a while. And then it goes for a while. That's go. why you got to do it early. That's up. all right. All right, there you go. There it is. <laughs> what's up, man? Thanks for being here. Cheers, brother. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. This is awesome. You guys are rock stars. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, we'll see. If after a couple of uh, couple of minutes you still think so, then mm. we'll maybe we're doing something right. But we'll we'll have some fun tonight. We're we're not your typical interview. We're gonna throw some curveballs at you. We're gonna talk a whole lot about dancing goat and the good stuff you got going on in Heck Wisconsin. Yeah. But hey, Nick, do us a favor before we kind of dive right in. I'm gonna throw the spotlight on your brother. Tell the people who may not know who you are a little bit about dancing goat, um, because we we want them to learn as much as they can tonight and soak it all in. Cool. Well, my name is Nick Brady Moss. Um, I'm operating partner of the Dancing Goat Distillery. My family owns it, and um, I, I run it with my friends and family there. Um, we like to have a lot of fun. We enjoy each other's company, and we make rye whiskey. Um, make a mm. lot of bourbon, too, but what we're really passionate about is rye. Um, I like to say I'm a student of MGP. Um, I have a long buying relationship with them through my family, and uh, I, have, I have really learned how to make whiskey rye whiskey the way that they do. Um, we, uh, we've, we're really proud of the whiskey that we make at the Dancing Goat, really proud of the gin that we make at the Dancing Goat. Um, we really like to think that the difference between our facility and most others is we're not trying to just go crazy with on-site consumption. Uh, we really wanna focus on an educational experience to connect with our consumers. And so when people come, we want them to better understand the whiskey process. There's not just whiskey elves on the other side of the wall, you know, spraying this stuff out the other side yeah, right. um, you yeah. know, fermentation distillations intentional whiskeys are designed for long-term aging in ways that are going to be unique and palatable and fantastic um we uh we love we love people who love whiskey at the dancing but we love all spirits uh we like to say we're a celebration company um it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's a loss or a gain we want to be there with you celebrating in life and that doesn't always just mean um with alcohol um we we have a lot of on-site experiences, education experiences that are a lot of fun, but also we really value the the just inherent 
gist of human nature, right? We'd be like yeah, right. human people. I love it, man. That's is that awesome. enough? Is that enough? My I, no, dude, you're I like great. It. They exceed our expectations. Uh, you know, usually we get, uh, I'm from so-and-so, and then and, uh, this is my distillery. We go right back to the interview. That, that sounds like, sounds like if we end up up there at some point, it's going to be a heck of a good time. Well, so, we, we've done a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I love that it's family owned, Nick. I mean, you said you mentioned you run this with your family and friends. I love that I yeah, that ethos that you guys have, I guess, about your your juice and your your sort of mission. Uh how long ago did the for us out there that don't know, how long have you been doing like how long has the family been doing dance? Like when did it start and and sort of how long you guys been been doing this? Dancing Goat's been a project since oh god. Um 2014, yeah. 2015 is when we really started it. Um talking about it in 2013, 2014. Uh, my father had been in the liquor industry for, for decades, and um, we had, in his retirement, he had come up with a, a, a product called Ramchata that my family mm -hmm. uh, owned and operated um, mm -hmm. for about a little over 10 years. And so That's I got, uh, I, when I graduated college, I was heading into the marijuana industry, and uh, I took an about face to, to come back into spirits and work with my grandfather and my father, which I, I do not regret. Um, it's a, been an amazing opportunity. With the success of Ramchata, obviously we had... A large financial wind to all, and um, we we had planned on building the dancing goat as a monument to my grandfather um, to build nice. and make whiskey how he really loved to make whiskey. Unfortunately, he got ill when we were building it, and so um, had took some help to to complete the facility and get and get working. We opened our door. We started distilling. Opened our doors 2016, and um, uh, yeah, and, and and we've been making whiskey ever since. That's, that's crazy. Awesome. Rum chata. You remember that, Andy? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we all have, have partaken in some rum chata. Yes, yes, that's yeah. crazy that you guys, you were the, you're the ones who you put that brand out. And are you still making that? I mean, is that part of your portfolio or is that you moved on from rum chata? No, we sold that yeah. to Gallo yeah. a couple of years right. ago. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard. It's hard to sell something that you, you built and you like, right. it's so like I did, I mean, my dad did the recipe, the horchata recipes when I was 19 years old. Um, the original wow. recipes that, that wow. we based the liqueur off of. And so I sold it on the backseat of my car when we were only there in one state. That's um, crazy. I bootlegged it to Iowa. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, right. And we, we were drinking it with Fireball. And we kind of lit the world on fire. And, and my whole life changed since that, that week. Actually, I've four been... days after that week, or four weeks after that day, we started getting emails from people all over Iowa and then all over the country about this, this shot that just kind of took the whole world over. And yep. then uh, about 12 years later, it became this giant thing that was really hard to, hard to manage. <laughs> you know, we're, we yeah, literally, sure. my dad had already retired. We're not a big company. Yeah. We, we yeah. built our own yeah. production facility. And uh, in order to see, you know, it's kind of tight. It's kind of sad because it's like, why would you ever get rid of something like that? But also to actually see how far it can go in distribution and reach the world. We right. can never do that. And so it's, it was bittersweet to, to sell it. But we have an opportunity and spirits here at the Dancing Goat um, and some of the other ventures that we're in through our family office. and. Um, you know, yeah, we're, we're just focused on instead of managing people, um, we're, we're focused on making spirits, which is ultimately what we want to do. And look, one one that is door insane. closes another another. Well, I don't know if it closes. I mean, I, I think it, it it allowed them probably. Exactly. I assume it's a new opportunity Nick, to to do dancing goat, right? I mean, you you sold it, so you that, did that, make that, money that was, off that was it. My point. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You know, my dad being in the liquor industry, my my grandfather being in the liquor industry, they spent so much time making whiskey for other people, and they made a lot of money for a lot of other people. And it and and when you work for a corporation that only has one Mashville and you make eight products from that one Mashville and consist, you know, you don't get to be artistic. And my dad's a very artistic person. And so yeah. the opportunity to do this only comes with the the rise of Rinchada and then the the departure of it. You know. Yeah, so it's no been cool. It's been really cool. Well, there's Joe Graves. I know Joe Graves probably drank a lot of rum chata. Yeah, I, I guarantee sure it. And we got, you know, JG's here. He's in Iowa. He's in so Iowa. He, I'm yes. sure he had a little bit We've of got some, oh, some... Go Hawkeyes, Caitlin Clark, baby. That's I know, what man. You know, I, did I see that was the most, that was the highest dude, rated women's basketball game? That was higher. I mean, sure it was. You yeah, know for Dave sure Portnoy was. of Barstools. I assume you know Dave Portnoy, right? I don't know. I mean, we don't like hang out, but I know right. who he you is. Know, yeah. I, I love watching him on Instagram. And he was like flying home on his jet plane. He's like, yeah, I went to, you know, to to Albany to see. Caitlin Cart play because I chase greatness and she's great. Like I, you know, and it is, I mean, she is the greatest female basketball probably player ever to play. And it probably is cool to see her live in one of her last collegiate games. I think it's pretty cool. And I hope they win it all. So take it to Carver Hawkeye arena, her last game where like four fifty, four ninety 90 yeah. or something like something crazy. crazy to get in the door. Yeah. When she played so at Maryland, it's crazy. Yeah. We're a big 10 school. And by and by so the way, it was, I, it's I, sold I out. city yeah. is a 
cool town. You said you did yeah, like it. Yeah, it's tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I, 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 I was just say, if you can't, if you can't tell yet, I was a hot guy. Uh, nice. All right. So now I drove. So I drove through. I'd never been to Iowa before. And then all of a sudden, I had like this three days in Iowa. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm driving through. Uh, stay, for work, and, work. For work. And I was yeah. in Des Moines. Uh, I took this wicked detour so I could go to Dyersville just to see Field of Dreams, even though I knew it was two hours out of the way, just so I could walk you in the corner. Go. You were there. And, you had to go. Dude, yeah. worth every second. Then I go to Iowa City, and I'm like, "This is in this is in Iowa." I mean, this yeah. it, it, no, it's not <laughs> sweet. <laughs> it's not yeah. the this the scenery was beautiful, and I, I <laughs> and I, I just I was like, "Holy hell, where am I?" I was like, "To hell with Kansas." I like Iowa. This is great. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, really, it's great. It's it great. Was, I got my my wife upstairs. I met yeah. her in Iowa. I love that. I love that place so much. There's a couple oh, yeah, of guys that work at the you know, and No, it's, it was. It was you a good a smart time. person, JG. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized I was down there. I'm gonna start getting looking, talking back. You know, like, yeah, JG. I met him out in Des Moines. He was he's he's, right. he's I was through and through. Anyway, so we're getting off. Now we do. We, 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 we get off. You're getting to know me. You're getting to know me. That's right. That's right. Yeah, That's there. true. That's true. There you go. So um, anyway, my journey back with Dancing Goat is yep. is all and, and so. Th- Tomato, tomato, limousine, limousin, 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 yeah, Samsonite. Uh, uh, I was way off. Samsonite. So, yeah. say, <laughs> say, say it one more time. It is limousin, limousin. <laughs> Limits and there you go. Come this. on, there you go. Come on. I think Bo, Bo, we have a friend, we have a, a hawk guy with a very French name, Bo Bones. He's on here somewhere. I know he's watching. Um, but I think he'd go Limazon. I think he'd probably Limazon. Whatever. Tomato, tomato. Tomato. Yeah, tomato. Yeah, tomato. That's, that's that's great great However, you pronounce it, it was good. I was like, man, I and so, so you got an OG. I got an OG here. here. Uh, you should pour this, dude. This is I really just did. good. I just tried this. It. Is fantastic. So, this you were telling us, this is one of the first, I guess, back. Yeah, that's an early batch. That was one of our first. Uh, that was when we first switched to ninety five, and so God. we, you know, with the thing with limousine that's really important, limousine rye limo, um, at all limo, um, is uh, is the finishing process, our limousine process, and so we're not it's doing. Uh, yeah, that's Bo. Bo just coming. It's limousine. It's limousine. <laughs> limousine. All right, bye, uh, bye, Bo. Love you, Bo. Bo. Love you, Bo. Go, go high, guys. Caitlin Clark, <laughs> CC baby. There you go. Um, <laughs> but uh um <laughs> that's so funny he chimed in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it so much. Um but uh, what's really important about the about limits and rise the finish is the finishing process and um it, we really control the amount of tannin that we end up with in the final product and we try to take okay. it to a point where it's very pleasant, accessible, and cocktail applicable all in one. Um as a as a final product as an ingredient for you to use however you want. Um and so we we've had fifty one percent rye from MGP mm-hmm. in there, we've had 95 rifle MGP in there. The the big difference with ours is it's it's a Canadian style rye. And so mm-hmm. uh, we're using used cooperage instead of new cooperage. Yeah. And then the limousine process is a double barrel cast finish from there. And so we yeah. load our limousine oak solaire after a blend, do a finish, and then we fill up our, our secondary cast, our proofing cast. And that's where we either proof down or we stop for resting and marrying to become a single barrel. Wow. Uh, uh, it is, I, I, was an, I was an instant fan. And, and yeah. I said... Todd, you got to try this. I'd never then even heard of I ended up getting the second one that I got was this six Sealbacks from Sealbacks, S- the single, single barrel, barrel, which was just bloody good. Um, they, also I love that front. you have that bottle. Yeah. To, um, there it is. I, I drank half of it, and then I didn't want to drink anymore because I knew I couldn't so, get it again. So I got... I, let's talk about that, then. So it, it, I get most... The only dancing goat that I've been exposed is through Sealbacks or Shared Poor. So like that's for somebody who lives in Maryland. Where's your distribution... Is it expanding? Where's the best place somebody from, you know, Florida or Maryland or California can pick up some any of your dancing goat offerings? I know Sheriff, we'll talk about that in a second. You have sort of a, a box set out right now, but where's your distribution right now and where's it headed? Um, well, definitely Midwest focus. You know, when we had Rum Chata, we had a lot of what I call false distribution. So we were available in states where we really didn't have demand in markets that we really couldn't support. And at one time that was, you know, over 30 states. Once we sold them Chata, we've really contracted that because it's really about what we can manage. And we can't, gardens you don't water don't grow, right? And so yep, um, yep. I know in, in Florida and Texas, we can be found um, sparingly around, not not a ton. The best bet for variety and for bangers would probably be online marketplaces for them. Um, North Carolina is a pretty active market for us. And then mainly from there, the Midwest. So Missouri, 
um, Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, a little bit in Michigan, Minnesota's heating up, Iowa's heating up a bit. And so we, we focus mostly in our home markets with some weird tertiary exteriors, um, but we do service uh, we do service with Sharepore and with Sealsbox, you know, as much of the country that can be shipped to. With Sealbox, we've done some really cool independent projects in the past with uh, with a podcaster friend of mine. That's what you're what you're drinking right now, um, and then also just with Sealbox in general. Um, and then with Sharedpour, obviously, we've done some really really extensive custom stuff, um, like right. what you just posted there. And so uh, yeah. the online marketplaces do have some really cool stuff that that distro usually doesn't see. It's definitely worth uh, finding. And you, you mentioned North Carolina blown up. So so my cousin, uh, well now cousin he was a former frat brother of mine i went to school down in north carolina um he sent me a sample he said you gotta try this have you ever heard of dancing goes like yeah they're fantastic he sent me oh, yeah. a sample oh right of a rye finished in chocolate bitter barrels uh, and uh, yeah you did and let yeah, me you tell did. you something i never got a chance i uh support of that i i took a sip of this and i said whoa what wait a minute what, 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 what the hell is this whoa. and it's very rare that yeah, you take a sip of a whiskey and you're like, just first sip, you're like, that's different. That time I've got to have more. Yeah. Long story short, we started talking. I got another little sample of it. It was fantastic. Loved it. Can't wait to find more and talk about more. But it was just wonderful. And then I talked to Jay from from uh, Shared Port, and he's like, dude, they're great. They know all kinds of stuff. They're like they're masters with these things. So I love the fact that you guys are also experimental mm-hmm. and you guys are doing some new things, even if it's distillery only releases. But you guys have. It, Make it worth the destination to go out there because there's some fun stuff that uh, may not be everywhere and just makes it worth that trip uh, right outside of Madison. You know, more than just distillery exclusives, a lot of that really fun stuff is in our single barrel program, which is, which is you know, a part of what's really cool about Limousine Rye is because we're kind of been pigeonholed into this corner of calling it whiskey from a rye mash because we age and use cooperage. We have essentially unlimited freedom to finish in any way that we want to without changing the label. And so a lot of our single barrels have just, I mean, for instance, the one that you're talking about is probably the cow pie barrel. And the reason that that barrel came into existence was um, North Carolina loves our liqueur. It's a cordial called cow pie. It's a chocolate caramel cream liqueur. Yeah, in, in, in Wisconsin, it's uh, it's like a pixie. Or if you guys know what a pixie is, or like, uh, yep. Yep. so yeah, like a pixie. Um, better than a pixie, it's cow pie. But yeah. um, it's a chocolate caramel cream liqueur that they love. And so he had said to me, I want a cow pie single barrel. And I was like, a cow pie finish, chocolate caramel finish. And so we did, we used barrels that we knew would give high amounts of caramel, semi-cellulose, caramel, and then chocolate. And to try to just give, make it, you know, kind of cool and kind of seem like that cow pie finish that they love. And so that's like an example of, of you know, we get feedback from a partner that has mm-hmm. done a lot of business with us that loves our stuff. And, and we gave them something cool and unique, really specific to them. And and it, 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 it and frankly, it's fantastic. I don't mean to tell my own horn, but that's such a cool, cool finish. Oh, dude. That, that I was, finish crazy. Absolutely blown away because you could almost think like, okay, this is going to be cloyingly sweet, over the top. Yeah, this right. is another gimmicky pour. Yes, the chocolate notes came pouring through, but man, was it Jeez. complex and rich and decadent. All in one, I was like... He bought a single barrel, didn't he? Like, he got that barrel, right? He did. He ended up getting a barrel of it for his whiskey club, and I said, hey, hey we need some, to maybe think about Somewhere this, down the road, I might need to make friends <laughs> yes. with somebody from We need to head out to Wisconsin. Damn, that was good. Guys, but, you want a single barrel? Yeah, I, but, do. I know I do. Well, he wants. He, I want it. He, he was everything, but I, I. But the thing is, it was, it was more so. The advice I heard shortly after is, they're creative. If you oh, can, if you can yeah. dream it, there's some stuff up there that they can probably do because they're very smart. You guys are. You approach things with a very intelligent but approachable lens, which I think is awesome. And I think it, it shines in your juice. I think it makes people really kind of crave for more, and it's it's making me want to kind of stock up on more because I actually I've, I. I drank a little bit too much of some of the other ones. So, um, but yeah, I absolutely loved it. But I, I think it's really cool that you guys are doing that. And so, let's we'll uh, learn more about that single barrel program as we as we move. I don't know. Forward. What do you guys think out there? I mean, we 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 excited maybe to have Andy go up to Wisconsin and, and check out what's going on with Jay, and maybe I don't know. I, I think that could be in the future. I mean, think? if you'll if you'll have me, Nick, I might. Oh, pull, Nick will have anybody. We, 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 can, we, yeah, we can, man. We can paint the town. Maybe we'll be, we'll be great. Oh, All dude, right, so- I'll take you on a raccoon hunt, man. We'll hunt some coyotes. We'll take you on a single barrel hunt. It'll be a good time. We'll hang on the Rick house. We'll call Jay up. Jay lives down the street, so he's close yeah. by. Yeah, we can get ignorant. Yeah, we have a good time. <laughs> oh, oh, my, 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 I may be a time. My inner redneck starts flying. Oh, oh, I'd love to see that. Go. 
that's it. I'm, I'm ready to roll. It'll be fun. You bet we um, want some. There you go. I like that, Corey. No, I like that comment. You know, that's, a, that's, oh, that's, that? that's, a, that's a good comment. You can You're well spoken. Yeah, well spoken. Yeah, I knew you'd get rid of that comment real fast. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. Well, what's, I want to drink something. We just tried your your the OG here of this lemons and rye, which I absolutely love. I mean, by the way, is Bo hanging out with us? If we go, Bo's out. hanging out with us for sure. Bo, Bo's driving. Bo's <laughs> driving. He's a man. <laughs> Tells me I'm gonna need he's an got, extra day he, off. He, he's always driving because he's always got to get to a date with a new model. So, oh jeez. Yeah, I definitely. Want, I definitely want Bo to hang out. <laughs> yeah, he really wanted to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> The, uh, so from the original, I'd probably go to the bed. It's already, it's already 930. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, should we keep people on the, 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 the limousine? We have this wonderful nine-year limousine uh, you know, ride that y- we have here that I have drank over the weekend. I did a short on it real quick today, and I love this bottle. I, I think and, – and to me, this is – guys, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I'm going to put it up here. But, Andy, put this up. This – Tell me a little bit about this. It's MGP, right? So this is a nine-year uh, ride, and it's like I think six months with this French oak stays coming at a hundred and you know what, six almost sixteen proof. This has batch B fourteen A. This is to me, I think sixty sixty five bucks. That is to me an absolute steal, Nick. I don't want you to have to raise your prices, but uh, no I want, on it. And I'm telling you, this I'm is. Sorry. I haven't tried that yet. This is. I love it. I don't know if anybody out there has had this nine year and what it was a seven barrel blend. So it might be gone, I guess. If I know it's gone on sealbacks now, but tell me a little bit about yeah, this bottle that goes into it. It's pushed into market by now. So what we we we're out we're we're done shipping from uh, here. This was an LTO that we did for O and D. So this released right before October. Um, you okay. know, it takes a while to trickle through the market, and there's still yep. some on shelves in some places, but there's not okay. much left. Um, Got it. This is a really. Uh, sentimental batch to me so these lots this okay. lot b14 is one of the first lots we ever bought and one of the reasons that our price mm-hmm. is really good is we bought all this stuff so we bought this stuff when it was going in the barrels you know Makes sense. and so um you know this is one of the first things we filled one of the first things we bought and it's it's they're actually it's literally the first thing i ever blended for limousine rye batch b14 oh. was our first was our first batch and um it's 51 percent rye for this one um we we just let it chill. It got to it got to eight and a half years old. We selected barrels for a blend, um, and what we did is we we finished it inside of uh, young bourbon barrels. And so the reason okay. that we did that is we wanted to make sure we didn't end up with a lot of green tannin. We did mm-hmm. want to add a good amount of hemicellulose, though. We did want to add sugar. Bricks mm-hmm. are going to make it more palatable. Uh, extend the finish. Just voila, you know. And so we actually we use Jim Beam lit barrels because uh, we know that Jim Beam white label are very very consistent at three years old and as a finishing mm-hmm. vessel. Um, you know, we're not making beer. And so what we finish is not going to taste like what was in the barrel before. It's right. going to taste like the hemicellulose and the tannin that we extract from it. And so we, we knew we just wanted a little kiss more tannin on there to make it taste truly nine or 10 years old. Let <sighs> it breathe a little bit. It came out that uh, our, our blend was about 126 proof. Uh, we, we dropped it 10 points for palatability and to get a little bit of viscosity. And so that 116 where it came out just a little more accessible to people, but also it was a, it was a little more, uh, has more demulcency. It sticks on the palate a little bit better at the lower proof. Dude, uh, Nick, uh, do you do you do these things often? These podcasts are you are you on, are you on these quite a bit? I gotta ask. I mean, because you're ridiculously well spoken about <laughs> it. I mean, I, I got he's in shock. No, no, not not no. Look, I'm just I'm just saying. Like he could have his own show. Like, I like, think he like, should he, have. Like his you own know, show. I remember three sheets. You know, he could have his own show. I man, agree. Going around because I mean, he talks about you like damn. Yep, it's I really appreciate that. No, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't stand silence. So I never let it sit and I just don't stop talking. Um, I, you know, these are my, he is eloquent. So he is eloquent. He is, he's a beautiful man. You know, the the voice too. He's got a, he's got a face for TV and a voice for radio. Thank God he's podcasting. You (laughs) You should, you should, you should hear him sing. He's like a cross between Fergie and Jesus. I mean, it's great. Dude, sing for me, dude. Let's go karaoke. I I I mean, I'll call my brothers. We'll get going. Here we go. I'll I'll show you how good his voice is. Take a bottle. Shake it up. Make I'm not doing that all. I'm not you're gonna put that in. I'm stopping before you do that. <laughs> that was awesome. That was no, awesome. Cool. Don't get him started, Isn't that Nick. Amazing? Nick, don't get him started. It's gonna yeah, be it's, it's, yeah, that's beautiful. It's oh, it's amazing. Yes, no, yes. no, don't worry. I might have Jesus. one or two more. All right, let's talk about the whiskey while you know that. <laughs> you know what I love about this is you mentioned how you, you put it in, in bourbon ex bourbon barrels to get, you know, to me that 
you know, it's a 51% rye, right? So you've already got 45% corn in this blend, right? This MGP blend. But it's not, you know, it, you still get the finish of the rye spice, which I like. But I get like a caramel sauce up front. The viscosity is off the chart. Baking spices, nutmeg. On the nose, I get big time orange, which is what I would expect. And I get like a vanilla cream. I just, I mean, everything about this is just like a wave of like decadence. But yet it finishes with that rye spice and cleanses it you can taste the proof it's perfect i love this rye whiskey you know what i think nick's rubbing off on you that's about as eloquently oh, as you've put a, that a, was stellar dude that was stellar it's like chat gpt wrote it that, it's <laughs> well, like, i've been drinking it all weekend to get my you know, my tasting notes down something wore off on and that yeah was, there it is there it that is. was really impressive that was it's nice. like I felt like I levitated there. You're kind of like you're kind of like Will Jesus Ferrell when he was, when he yes. was debating. He was like, yes. oh, "What just happened? What just blacked out? What just happened? Blacked, blacked out." <laughs> that was really good. I, I mean, I just love it. I wish more people could get it. Now, will this come out like again? Yes. As, so, wh- tell me about the, wh- what will happen here. How will we get this when it comes out again? Okay, so they they emailed me. Hold on, they texted me to tell me because they knew that <laughs> I should get it. Um, okay, and so. Uh, Mm. What he had said was uh, nine years gone out of Wisconsin and Illinois retail. Look online mm-hmm. um, if you can find it. And then OND of 2024 will do the next one, which will be a 10 year. B14 mm. already 10. It's crazy. God. When I mean MJ tasted through the barrels a couple months ago, um, we literally said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we pick. They're all stellar. And so mm. it's just, and if you look, so if you look at that, the really cool thing about that is that you know that red hue that's kind of in there, and you can yep. see it too on the other one. The other one actually pops a lot more red. That's the power yep. of French oak with rye. When like what we're really looking for is we're looking for these banging red heads. That's what we really want to produce. So we that's where we know that with, with our rye has taken on enough tannin, it's gonna have it's gonna be spicy without getting too dilly. Um, and okay. just be primed. Burb, it's this just great. Is right. Good it doesn't rye. have that big dill note on there. I like no. that. This is, this is really there's well not. done, man. This and I like really the mint, good. but there's not a lot of mint. Uh, there's a hint on the nose, but it's it's not there. I mean, this thing is. I drank it, and as soon as I drank it, I, we have a text group. I said, "Guys, you got to." I mean, this to me, first of all, is amazing, and it's only sixty sixty five bucks. It's the best value rye whiskey that's on the market I've ever had. I mean, honestly, I I would pay. I I told you this. I'd pay double for that. I, I seriously I, would. I, I've, I've bought things why three you, times why don't you as much. Get two bottles in, and I'll take. One. I will probably buy two bottles. Yeah, get two. That's there double. you go. That's, that's I, double just, right there. I'm, I'm telling you guys, you can tell when I'm excited about a rye whiskey, and it's this one. And I'm not just blowing smoke, Nick. I got this. I appreciate one, it. And it was immediately like, this is this is it, man. And you know, because you prices of everything have gone up so much. I mean, you run it, you know. I mean, everything's going up. Your costs are going up, and pr- to get a rye whiskey that's nine years old, finished with French oak stage, that's this good. For 60, 65 bucks or 69 bucks to me is is perfect. So well done. And I can't so Thank you. this year, when will the next iterate the 10 year come out this year sometime? You said that the OND here. this year, yeah. So we'll do a 10 year. Uh, it'll have a little more distribution. We'll do a small lead. We'll do a larger blend this year as well, since it was so well well received. Uh, no, it's, think it's it? really I think this is this right? is this is beautiful because I, I was sipping on this earlier. The yep. the, the six year oh, the, yep. this is this is actually a glorious pour. Mm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Ah, the viscosity. Uh, um, and you said it's a special blend to you because it was one of the first barrels I guess you bought, but I mean, I guess you, what's, yeah. This was the first mm. lot that we blended limo out of. So when limousine one, the first limousine rye at three years old was batch B14. Oh. That's why we call this one B14A. And so and that was, you know, that was six years ago. Um, we, you know, limousine rye, we use a six year age statement. Um, but, uh, uh, I just I really love this whiskey. It's 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 I've grown a lot. It's grown a lot. Um, if you look at the color compared to our first release, I mean it's come a long way. We've learned a lot about yeah. honestly the density of alcohol. We've learned a lot about efficiencies. We've learned a lot about finishing. We've learned about the human palate, and I think it really shows. And um, even that one, you can kind of see the, the huge difference in color. And a lot of that is just us learning how to finish and us learning more about whiskey and the aging process and, and hemicellulose and vanillin and extraction. And, um, it's it's been a journey. The real limousine rye has been a journey into us trying to figure this out yeah. without my grandpa being alive. And and I think it really yeah, speaks good. to we're trying to figure it out. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful So Dano ask again where I can get it. Well, I think if you're in the sort of Wisconsin area, Midwest area, maybe still be on the shelves where you distribute on the shelves, but I know it's shared poor and silbax, it's gone. But fear not, Dano, it's the the ten year of this is coming out this year. So just you know, be on the lookout if you're not in the Midwest to your normal Silvax and, and shared pour. And as soon as I see it, if you're a Patreon member of ours, which are you are, I'll certainly let you know it's available because 
I'm going all over it. I can't wait for that. That's fantastic. It's great. No, great it's, stuff. It's, it's really good. So that being said, you know, I'm more of a, a rye guy as well, but let's talk about the well, other before bottle. we do oh, that. Let's, sure. let's, 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 oh. let's, 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 oh, let's, yeah. You're going too fast. I like the drink. You're really, you're really drunk, and then you're going too fast. And then, and then he gets the story of my life, and it gets just, it's just, it's just not good. Mm. Um, mm. Then he starts doing weird stuff like, uh, mm -hmm. um, like you're well, like he starts singing like about milkshakes. Because my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. They're like, <laughs> it's better than yours, damn right. It's better than yours. <laughs> Dude, Josh, my milkshake rings on my way to the yard. Dude, we were playing See? that in the distillery a couple weeks ago. See? I mean, Nicholas is my spirit. It. <laughs> there it is. See? Uh, there it is. There it is. All right. Perfect segue. So <laughs> mm. uh, Damn, we're cool. we're rock and roll guys out here. All right. Yeah. Tight. And then we heard a little bit about your musical taste. And and That's so good. you're a you're a Prince fan from what we hear, which is cool. Big time. Big time okay. Prince, Prince, is. Prince is awesome. Uh, one of my regrets in life is I haven't seen him live. We, did, we didn't see him. See him. We no, didn't we did see not. him live. Like, he was a hologram. That's right. right. <laughs> that, Dude, I mean, honestly, his Super Bowl performance at halftime mm. it changed my life. I was Ooh. like, damn. You want? I never thought he was. You that. want to be that cool, don't you? We oh, all, yeah. yeah don't we all? But, but I mean, what Prince is less than you are. Yeah, it's true. Sachet. That's the that's the thing. It's like just sachet. You know. That's the whole thing. Is fucking throw hard. And don't ask for forgiveness. But you dude, are then, you then I, I so Prince is like, okay, man. Like, I mean, he's right up there. You got Prince. You got the King of Pop. You got these guys like the icons. And then someone mentioned Yell, and I was like, I was oh like, yeah, look. dude. And I was like, and we never heard of it. What? I looked him up, and right. I get this, this this girl what looks like this plastic leather suit. We saw the suit, video, and I was like, and I said, I said, okay, let me listen to it for a couple minutes, and I was like. No, no, I'm not understanding this. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little taken back. Oh, dude, you don't speak French? Oh, dude, that's why. Dude. <laughs> we don't. I speak don't know if it was too French. Dude. You. Oh, yeah. They're a rock, dude. They're a rock band. They're playing live. Wait a minute, they're a rock wait, band. Wait, that was like wait, pop. Wait, like, it's, it's pop. It's it's French disco, right? That's French disco. Right, okay, all right, that makes sense. I was like that makes uh, sense. the one song didn't sound very rock and roll, but that's all right. So it's yeah, W Y E L L E, right? Look them up. Look them up. Y E L L E. Yeah. And then uh, the other one was what was it? Well, I have a question about that, Nick. Good. How did you f get exposed to Yell? Like, how, how, where did you find them? <laughs> oh man! So, um, uh, well, so so can I, I'll touch on Prince quickly. Do you mind if I touch on? Yes. So yes. Prince is a devotion to my family. We actually have a, a Prince themed product that's going to be an annual release that we'll have come out. Um, but we really love yeah. funk, and and you know, I love I love rock, I love country, I love rap, mm -hmm. I love hip hop, I love all types of music. But I really love things that I can sway to. I'm mm -hmm. sitting in the distillery all day. I'm sitting in a control pen. I want to sway to something, right? And I want to come in with my own on top of it. I love to sway to that. You know I do, Daddy. You see me all day at the panel. I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? I love, and it all doesn't right. matter if it's what kind of beat and melody or harmony it is, as long as it's not disjointed. Disjointed jazz, disjointed jazz is the only thing I can't do. But we, have, <laughs> um, we do have a Prince themed product called I Would Ride for You, which um, I would. Die for you. Yeah. Dude, someone mentioned that in the chat that yes. I would ride for you. They said yes, it was that first phenomenal. Going on. Yeah. That's a banger. That's okay. a banger. Release. That's fantastic. Okay, good. When's that coming out? That we'll have another one that's coming out in a couple months. So I, the next the next iteration is gonna be coming out. Well, if um, you know people from Baltimore that might want to review that, that you just let us <laughs> well, know. Right. Yeah, we'll send you one for sure. All we'll right, I like you one. Sounds good. That's awesome. Um, but then um, uh, Yell is a gift from my brother. My brother's very eccentric. Um, he's a really, he's in the spirits industry as well. He's also in the film industry. Nice. And um, I come from a family of performers. My family, uh, they're, they're mm -hmm. trained classically in singing. Um, wow. Most of them were, were performing on stage theater uh, for most of their lives. And so I, um, I didn't, I didn't participate in theater as a child, but I, I kill a karaoke bar. Um, yeah. I'm decent. So I'm do a decent I. voice, but my brothers are gnarly. No, I'm and not so, sure. um, but anything that can make us dance, we love to dance. Um, when we get together, we love to dance and play cards, dance and play cards. Dude. And there's not a lot of better groove than Yell. Um, but we've seen them live quite a few times. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, I listen to a lot of old disco, disco samples, um, uh, instrumentals. Uh, I really yeah. like. Uh, I really like structure. I really like certain structures of music and structures of rhythm. And I think that they echo through life. I think that there's patterns that that infiltrate your psyche, your life, what you're doing at the time. So like 
blending for me is a time when I listen to like a lot of rhythmic, methodical, like yell. All right. So here's the thing though. You know, he likes structure. He likes, you know, all these things. I'm wondering though, does Nicholas really love eighties hair metal like we do? I do. I do. I'm in. Oh, you're in. in. Not not like you do. Not like you do, but I'm in. (laughs) I'm in hard. I'm in hard. Let's go. Like uh, like cherry pie. Like She's Warren. my oh. cherry pie. Cool drink of water, such a sweet surprise. Tastes so good, make a grown man cry. Sweet cherry wood. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna use that, are you? Oh, somewhere now. Oh. Then I'll use that for something. I'm gonna use it for sure. Whatever. Enough of that. Good lord. But anyway, yeah. So we we do like '80s rock. I think the Andy, the, his point, you know. You know, we like different. You, you especially any like Barry Manilow. Oh God, you're playing that. Well, I don't play anything. I don't this, you're, you're... Andy love. He goes to Vegas and sees Barry Manilow and you too. You know, and that's the crazy thing. You know. Oh, hey, you, you show up for that YouTube ticket. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yeah. <laughs> money bags, money bags over here. <laughs> With the show, I bet the show at the Sphere was crazy. Was it, was, it crazy? It was, here's the thing. Like uh, my wife's favorite band is U2, so it was it was it won right. So I, I was like, okay, chance for me to go to. Vegas, yeah, it's yeah, true, and it make her happy. Like, it's a win-win. I've, I've, it's seen, win-win. I've seen YouTube before; they put a good show, but you didn't need to see YouTube. Wasn't the draw? It was like, well, like who'd you say coming next there? Uh, fish and fish. then fish. There Grateful Dead might be Dude, the craziest those fish thing. tickets are like two grand. The cheapest fish tickets like two grand a ticket. Oh, that's Jesus. insane! It's like, crazy. I didn't, I didn't, it's crazy. Or close to that for you too. I mean, that was YouTube was actually wasn't bad. Could you imagine fish there? Just, Yes, oh my I can. God. It'd be stellar. It would be awesome. I saw. Oh, dude, I just. Uh, I just That'd saw Taylor nuts. Swift in Australia. You're you're messing with me. I was doing a consulting <laughs> trip in Australia, and I saw that she was playing there. Tickets were cheaper than here, and so I my my wife came. We did a little vacation after the consulting trip. Did and you really? How was, how was it? How was it? How was it? It was, dude. She's. I mean, remember, I'm a live music fan, right? I'm not a Swiftie. Yeah, she's stellar. Too. She's so true to the album. Like she sings yep. so true to the album, and she can't be lip syncing because she, like, she stops to be like, "Oh my god, hold on, I have a booger in my nose." Like yep. she, like, there's like these interruptions that cannot yep. be. She is. She is a star, dude. She is a star. She. Yep. Like, I. I was in. I was in. I was singing. Um, That's really dude, before cool. I went out, yeah. I went out raccoon hunting the other weekend, and I put her on before I went out. I was just standing <laughs> in my garage, and I was getting ready with my shotgun. It's like, bam, bam, the thug gets me good, the thug gets me good. The thug, dude, it was just she's tight, she's tight, she's dude, tight. So it's a funny story. Uh, like, so like, love I, live music. I'm That's trying great. to be so like, wait. like I was, I was Father Christmas this year, and I was like, okay, my two big gifts. Like, so I got my wife tickets to go see you too. Um, but my my wife is from Portugal. Uh, so her whole family's over there. My daughter's never been overseas. So my Christmas present to them was I got them Taylor tickets to go see. Their, it's coming up in May. They're going to go see Taylor in Lisbon. Oh, and awesome. So that was, so that was, so that was, that was Andy's that, not going there. I'm not going. I'm staying home watching my little boy. They're the ones yeah. you know it's for them. It was, it was for, which is funny because my daughter's two favorite bands. She loves, she loves Joe and She loves Def Leppard. We're seeing, we're seeing Def Leppard in Hershey Park together Def in Leppard. July. So how funny is that? But um, we are, go- so they're going overseas. They're going to see him. You're probably right about Australia. The tickets in Europe were 10 times cheaper than they were in the United States. And, yeah, and so it was like, God, what you can get, a, I get a plane ticket and a ticket to Taylor for what you would get to go see her here, which was kind of crazy, but she is crazy. over the moon again. So she can't she, wait. It's going to be her first concert. And then she comes back. She gets to see Lep and Journey with me. So she, she's excited. So it's her well, summer on, concert. Dude. Way, to, way to do it, dude. Way to provide. Because that's that's going to be a really special experience for her. I'm proud of yeah, you. Good on you. Good Thank on you. you. And see, good on you is one of my favorite sayings, too. And he said that's that, too. A, that's an Australian thing, right? Well, Damn. You know, good Nick's, on Nick's, you. Nick's, All right. Nick's you're, right. Let's, you're right. <laughs> you're all right, mate. Sure. Okay, well, sure. Right. <laughs> Wait, man, that's, Wait, that's, that's your line, that's, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, let's talk about this quirky and humble blend, uh, Nick. And so this is part of, I guess, a three-piece release on Shared Pour, and, and I'll put that link back up. Yeah, because that's a that's a tell really us good a little about this. Is again, you said it to us before, Quercus Humboldti. Wood? Yeah, Quercus Humboldti. Dang, I nailed that. Damn it, I'm good. Yeah, you did. so it's you it. Wood, that right? was that's. Impressive time. So when I was drinking this, so help me understand. You know, we hear about you know Ambarana. You, you hear pour, about you can pour me one. Oh yeah. Off? You yeah, know, you yeah. hear about all these. You know, Frank. Yeah. But 
this is nothing like when you think of like Brazilian, you know, the Brazilian Amberana, which is super cloyingly sweet and Cinnabon in a glass. This is not like this. Help me understand. So why did you one pick that? And two, what this is about in this series, and I'll put that link up, like what the three piece that's available in Sharepoint right now is all about. Awesome. I'd love to. So this is the Quirky and Hummel blend. So this is um, a very interesting look into MGP whiskey. This is 21% rye whiskey from MGP, and that is where the similarities cease with other inventories. This was custom. Uh, this lot was custom ordered in 2015 by a Titan industry who's passed away, and the the inventory got rehomed to us. We we purchased it from his estate. And uh, at this time, it's what I refer to as like the second great barrel shortage of my career. Obviously, a lot more barrel shortages than just my own career. Um, can you guys still got me? Yeah. Um, but then uh, uh, what ended up happening was he he went to MGP. He said, hey, I want 2,500 barrels. They said, yeah, great. We just need barrels. So if you send us barrels, we'd love to film for you. Good luck finding barrels. They didn't know that they tease an absolute rock star. And this man also used to be the president of Jack Daniels, and he worked wow. for Jim Beam. Or no, he worked for Bacardi. And so all he had to do was leave and call Bacardi Mexico, and he was like, I need 2,500 barrels. They had it ready in three months. The problem with that is, is it's Mexican quality control. And I'm not trying to be weird actually with that or anything, but it just, it's, it's well known that quality standards in Mexico, you, 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 you should expect to get what you inspected. And he did not yeah. inspect very hard. He was a very quirky man. He was a quirky little himself. Um, and so this is kind of a, a celebration of his quirky nature and his quirky deed. Um, quirky Sambolti was used. It's, a, it's Andean oak, Colombian oak. Um, Colombia, okay. like the country, Cartagena not like Columbia, Missouri. And I make that caveat because every bottle behind you was, there's a 90% chance that every bottle behind you was aged in wood that went through state mills in Columbia, Missouri, I assume. Um, that's where their biggest state mills are. They're, they're in Lebanon. Um, and so that's why I make that caveat. It's a, it's basically the same thing, except Mexican quality control. The staves were not seasoned consistently and they were not charred consistently. So when we take apart these barrels, we'll find you know, it was, it was marketed as a two char. It's barely even a one char at points. Some of them are, are burnt to a crisp. Um, really? But then also somebody went and took apart a bunch of these barrels, cut ridges in the charred barrel. So it's charred barrel when you cut ridges and you can see raw wood. Um, kind of like a Sinatra stave, but a Sinatra stave is the other way around. They cut the ridges first and then char it to increase the surface area of charred wood. The, the consequence of this is none of this is replicable. A lot of these barrels have seemingly just random number of staves in them. Um, some of them are, are clearly lacking staves. Some of them have more than others. Some of them have these ridge staves, some of them don't. Um, and there isn't a clear rhyme or reason to how many is where. Um, the consequences on the inventory is that there was, in blending it, we found five major profiles. We found a, kind of a generic wah-wah, um, bourbon-esque, like good, sometimes like, like, like texture like water, but bourbon notes to it, sticky, um, you know, caramelly, uh, oaky. Then we yep. had um, things that were absolutely stellar and delicious, like cocoa, espresso notes, heavy creams, a lot of heavy creams. And then we had a specific section of almost all heavy cream. It was very much like a, a cheap vanilla ice cream. It was very specific, and there's a huge part of the lot like that, um, like a Shope's ice cream almost, kind of like that for all of our Iowans out there. And then the last two were a majority of the inventory. Um, the first one is uh is is truly the essence of of Colombian oak that we have and it's a funky fruity floral dusty musty rickhouse funk that's what we got yep. delicious yep. creaminess yes. and then a small part of the inventory the fifth segment is a dead body and that's <laughs> and, and those those yeah, didn't get blended in but they're awful um, no, i said the process it's it cream cool with a touch of morgue yeah and i could and yeah. i could feel that <laughs> I mean, well, I said nice. there's something in here I've never tasted before, and that was that it. That would be the more. That was it. That was yeah, it. That would be good. So, yeah, when I tasted this, you know, we taste a lot of whiskey, and, and Nick was, I, I tasted this as a bourbon, and there was something I was tasting that I had never sort of gotten from a whiskey, a bourbon before, and I was trying to pull it out. So, I got like, I had written down like vanilla, Madagascar vanilla bean. Like, so when we brew, yeah. we brew, we're home brewers, right? Yep. So, we use like, the, we, they cost a lot of freaking money, by the way. They do. And they cost a shit ton of money. And you make, you know, you know, we make some stouts with that and use it when our brewing process. I'm like, I'm getting that. And then I got some like fruity floral notes, but I it was like almost like a mixed fruit. And then I we could not figure out, you know, it's the mouth feels creamy. There's that yeah. caramel sauce I got. So it's it's such a wild ride. And this is what a, a seven year bourbon, this one right here, but there's eight years in the set as well, right? There, there's two yeah. other ones that you have in this for set. For the price point. 
for yeah, all three. It's what I one mean, my God, that's, sixty-nine. That's, that's I think a, that's a steal. That's crazy. It's crazy. So the other two in the set are um, are quirky but older. So quirky was its own release, and then we had two releases that we wanted to do, um, but we didn't really have a ton of inventory for the bandwidth that we had. If that makes sense, and so we thought. A really good way to get it to market would be to get it to people who really want it, which is the Reddit groups that we do a ton of business with already. And so um, we know that they really like fun things. Jay likes fun things. And so what we did was we took a little bit of that inventory and we blended it with uh, with some in- with some 21% rye, 36% rye uh, mash, bourbon mash. And so 36% rye bourbon in used cooperage that we finished in toasted barrels. Um, so that is the uh, that is the one in that's kind of a cosmic looking. That's the uh, the toasted blend. The other one is uh, just a double oak. And so one of the things that we had heard is a remedies for tails with what we were you know twenty one percent rye burn from MGP is is like um, it's it's like well, it's like milk. Um, you need it, you get it from the store all the time. There so people so they're always making it. They're always making it. The fermenters are always running. They have. Whole fermenters and whole stills just dedicated 21% rye, 36% rye, and 45% wheat bourbon and MGP. The consequence of that is that the beer well is always full of tails. And so you have to mitigate that in your aging, you have to mitigate that in your finishing. And so what we did is we, we didn't blend those into the Quirky and Hummel blend originally. We did an, our own blend of them, and then we finished them in brand new high char barrels, uh, four chars, um, to, to get as much caramel and hemicellus as we could in there to kind of correct the tails. And so that, and, it, it, and I don't want it to sound like we took our dregs, which we did, and then finished them and we're telling the dregs, these barrels are right where they should be. They're stellar. I mean, they got the perfect amount of acidity and sugar in them to have a long lasting pour. It's oaky, it's smoky. And so we put that one in the camouflage. And the reason we put it in camouflage is, is we wanted to blend in with the others. We made it a more traditional, robust bourbon. Um, we finished it to be more traditional. Whereas the other one, we blended it very non-traditionally to really stand out. And so the three together, they all featured Quirky and Humble Blend, the actually original blended liquid that's in the Quirky and Humble Blend. That actual blend is, is, is blended. Yeah, there you go. It's blended with these other two. Yeah, we'll put this up. All that's amazing to take a look at. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is a... This is an amazing pour. Now I'm kind of upset we don't have the other two because I got well, I got, we can, I got well, we're So we're going to have to hop online this. and get yes. them because how long is this going to be available? I mean, this is until beautiful. it sells. I mean, we, we we tonight can get this, and I assume is it going to be on Share Pour for a bit? I mean, people who want to think about getting well, this. Well, this is no. I'm it's telling not you, this be up is for too long because this is a pre-sale. Oh no! And so we do need. Yeah. Oh. So we're trying to pre-sale because the inventories that we don't. So, like for instance. Um, we have, an, we have a theoretical maximum, right? But we don't want to blend, dump and blend things that we don't have to. And so we, uh, we, we did the inventories that don't get sold, we're just gonna leave, let them rest. They're, they're great. We don't want to jostle them around too much. And so that's why we're doing a, a pre-sale so we know exactly how much to bottle out of this. Um, and we've already bottled it. And so the, um, there is a maximum of what we'll have, but we're gonna close, I think in the next probably okay. week, or, week or 10 days right, or right. maybe 14 days. Go now, go quick now if you want to get it. Uh, it is. Ship is. To your door. That includes shipping for I'm, every box. I'm wrong, man. Get get this stuff because I mean, I'm, I'm, here's the thing. You know, we we we've had a ton of distilleries on. We appreciate everyone for their craft. Yep. Let's let's just be very honest, sure. okay? Because right everyone now. puts a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into what they do. I think what I like about you guys is that you are the same. You're putting blood, sweat, and tears into it, but you're you're thinking outside the box. You're not colored in the lines. And I think that's what makes everything you guys are doing so much fun. Yeah. It's 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 something unique to explore mm. that's there's lots of good whiskey back here. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between yep. it. Agreed. Agreed. I think you guys are doing something different and you're doing different well. Mm-hmm. That's a tough thing to do. To say, I'm gonna do something that no one else is doing, yep. and I'm gonna do it really, really yeah, well. No doubt. That's awesome. That's what I love about you guys. And that's what I really want to keep getting more and more acquainted with the things at Dancing Goat Distillery. Maybe by going up there. I think hanging 100%. Out. Because, but dude, I'm telling yep. you, man, this is... F- oh, I'm, 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 I'm in. You know I mean? I'm, I'm, an, I'm an easy date. We're going to go and up. And maybe find a, you know, an interesting barrel or two that we could... Do you really think I would? Yeah, for, we'll, for we'll, we'll, we'll take a peek when we get up there. Yeah, but look, hey, man, I just... You. You know, I'm sure there there's something that could tickle our fancy. But do, you guys are doing... <laughs> what you're doing, man, yeah. keep doing it because it's just it's just phenomenal. You guys are doing a great job. I'm, 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 I'm beyond impressed. And I say, I say that in all sincerity, 
You guys are doing a great job, really, honestly. Appreciate that. Thank you. Can I talk to Sugar Kitty real quick? So Hell yeah. Squirrel. Squirrels are really interesting. I looked at squirrels a while ago. Um, I like to keep oak and tannin separate for the most part, and so we don't use squirrel products. Um, what if you actually if you Google at the Mex, they make a bunch of cachaça barrels. Um, you can also you can go to our Instagram and see them. The crazy thing about these barrels, and they're truly they're 53 gallon cast, they were custom made, is uh they look like they're hand chiseled. Um they, they look like rum cast. They painted all the hoops because of rusting. So for them, they only make rum barrels, and so rum and cachaça are basically rum. Um, so it has white hoops on them, but then it looks like they were literally hand chiseled. Um, it's crazy looking barrels. Um, but you can come see them if you want. But uh, we do have a couple pictures of them on our Instagram. There you go. That's very cool. And yet, uh, Corey, the the ten year. Uh, I listen. The nine year to me is mind blowing. That I can't imagine what the ten year is going to yeah, be just, this year. Uh, I can't. Wait. I'm so excited. It's stellar. We were thinking the other yeah. day. We're like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you pick. They're all stellar. We looked at three different combinations, yep. and it didn't matter. They were all so mm. consistent, so delicious. It's just, it's awesome. I cannot it's wait really for awesome. that. All right, hey Nick, here's a question for. We're gonna go off topic again, real quick. William Hall, could you could see a William Maze and confused with another. Yeah, great bottle. I got him through Christmas. There you there go. You got are. him through Christmas, and you, everybody needs to appreciate get Christmas. the support on that. I hope you like the maze. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so so Nick, here's a question for you. Uh, you know, Steven Spielberg calls and he said look we're, we're we're looking to do a movie all about dancing goat because we think this is going to be a a, a top blockbuster nick you pick the actor to play yourself in this oh. movie who oh, would damn. Oh. Damn. Oh. I, willis I mean dang. Willis Dude, you, me. you don't look anything like bruce, bruce willis. willis for me you for look sure. like scott, scott van Pelt. i do look like scott van Pelt. Yeah, you oh, like, do look like scott van Pelt. Oh and he went to Maryland, yeah. and I went to Maryland. Yeah. So that's the funny yes. part. That's the funny but when part. you say Bruce Willis, I have to laugh. You look nothing <laughs> I like Bruce I know, Willis. I don't look like Bruce Willis. I'm just right. bald. Right. Go ahead. Oh, but, but, okay. How about you? Who's yours? Uh, Anthony Santander, Anthony Santander. <laughs> from the Baltimore Orioles. He's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm a his, baseball fan, so I know you're talking. I kind of see it. Okay. His um, kid, every time he hits a home run, his kid's playing screwly. There's Mr. Andy on TV, yeah, which is kind of funny. funny. Anyway. Yeah. All right, come on, Nick. Who's, right, so who's, who's playing who's, you? Who's playing Nick mm, in, the, in, the, in the dancing goat chat? Movie. Who should who should play Nick in the movie? Put it the in the movie. chat. Put yes. it in there. Who's, who's playing Nick let's in the, in see the movie? Here. Come on. Let's get some good ones. Oh, here. my God. Um, is it of all any actors that ever living Chris currently Pratt. alive? Chris Pratt. Now, that, that's how you know. He's from Iowa. He's sucking up to you. He's all sucking right? up to you. He's sucking so that's, up to that's how you know. Hey, I'm not that. I appreciate that. Good looking, huh? Chris Pratt, huh? My wife That's been... There's Iowa Does for it, you. Does it have to be alive or can they be, it be a dead no, person? It, it can be, it can so be anybody. Because yeah. I think Todd looks a bit like Walter Matthau with no hair. So <laughs> it's, it's fine. Okay. okay. I'm torn. I'm torn. I have two what I think are great answers, but I'm torn. Um, All right. I'm assuming you can only accept one answer. I'm assuming I can't give two yeah. answers. Throw them both out. We'll, we'll, we'll okay, okay. 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 So I really like to think of distilling very much like ranching because, um, you, 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 you do this thing, you take grain from a field and you distill it, right? So we ferment it, so we let bugs eat it and they shit out booze. And then that booze, we're gonna run through a copper still, which is we're gonna basically put copper into it. Um, and it's hepatoxic, by the way. And it's also solvent that we're gonna put into a barrel that we took from a tree. And it's like, well, it wasn't one tree, it was many trees that made the barrel. And so it's the, the idea that it ever tastes good or, is just crazy, right? And yet you put it in there and you just leave it alone. And you hope it doesn't fucking get ruined and destroyed, yeah. like, and that it's worth anything, like five years from now. Like, you pray to God it's worth anything. Kind of like uh, Yellowstone, right? Like this uh, guy, like, like, like he's walking around, and the whole world's kicking him in the teeth. He's just gonna kick him back. And it's all this. It's death by million paper cuts. If it's not, the the barrels evaporate while they're going. You know, the market turns, and bourbon's not as cool. You know, yeah. rye's never been as cool as bourbon. You know, yeah. Um, you got, you got issues with our community and our village in town that just like they're always coming after me. They're always breathing my neck. They're coming. They're gonna wear me down there. They're not gonna take my ranch. But I'm not <laughs> gonna say who you think I'm gonna say. I would say Daniel Day Lewis because he's oh. the only person that could actually oh. nail the manic outrage that I've had. Oh, I love Daniel Day Lewis. Trying to kick the world with the the other one. The other one would be Heath Ledger circa the Joker, oh, just because <laughs> when I shave my face with my long yeah. hair, um, I look like an absolute psychopath. Like I look like <laughs> I'm going to eat your skin off your body, and it's a it's like a joke in uh, it's a joke around um, 
the, the, the dancing goat that like I, my psycho face is like when I when I trim and when I cop that down. So it'd be Another, one of those two, I think. I, I tell you, or, 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 or Chris Hens, man, I tell you, I you're getting that thing. People, people, I've that's Bo, that's Bo, dude. When I used to be skinny, people used to tell me I was like, Matt Damon. He, he, got, he also got Val Kilmer, which I've I can say. I've got Val Kilmer when I'm yeah. skinny. I've got kind of the, the black jaw like Val does. If I get rid of my, you know, my Dagestani Gary, beard. Gary Old, Gary Oldman, I take it, Shedward. I take it. Look at that. Nice. So it's funny you said Yellowstone because my <laughs> I, was on a, I was on a Zoom the other day mm -hmm. with, with work. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't shaved in a hot second. I had a hat on, which I should have. And the guy called me Rip from from Yellowstone. So. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Head so, um, right, on down to the all right, baby. Seth so, Rogen. So, <laughs> Seth Rogen. All right. All right. Well, look, hey, we got all kinds of people. That's, what that's, about a music question? Do we have a music question for we Nick? Do have music, uh, but I also we... want, I wanted to let you know that you Todd was actually in a movie. Oh God! What is I, that? I, he was with, with Run the Real. Run the Real. Well, it's not, it's not even real. This is actually the poster on, dude. with Demi Moore. Uh, he was in Goat. I don't, I'm sure. You didn't turn dude. You didn't turn <laughs> it. Oh, God. I, I'm not sure if you saw it. Yeah, so he was actually – and that was a big hit. I'm not going to lie to you. That was a bad That was break. a big hit, dude. He really yeah. turned the world on fire there. That was he his did. water world, you know. Who played – is that Bruce Willis who played in that movie? Yes. But See, there you go. That, thank you, Andy, for telling me that I look like... <laughs> you played into it. You played right into his hand. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you so what much. You doing encouraging this? Bruce Willis, Van Pelt. That's, oh, God. Show me from high school. I don't have that. Show what from high school? My picture from high school. No. I had a mullet in high school. It was he great. Did, he did have hair. I also got Bruce my... Oh, he look did have a mullet. <laughs> but then, then he that got real... Awesome. And he yeah. got real buff, and, and he changed, and he started doing through different phases. Like, oh, well, you know, hey, like, listen, oh, I look, yeah. I look good he there. That, I think. And then he, he went through a, 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 a rock and hair. roll phase. Yeah, he Same went through a Borat up. phase. Oh, jeez, oh, now yeah, we're like that. Yeah, that yeah, that that guys, that banana guys. hammock. Yeah, he, he's, he's no he, problem. He's versatile. Anyway. So we'll, we'll say that. All right, I have a question for Nick, music wise, real quick. And we will, we'll end soon here, but I, because I, I want to know though, Nick. So we we talked about the you know, sort of the three bands you might like, but what, if there was one artist or band that you have not seen live, you said you're a fan of of, mm -hmm. of live music that you have not seen live that you wish you could, dead or alive, who would it be? Like, so there's dead one act that you have not seen that you Prince, were absolutely because I haven't seen him Prince because I haven't seen him but Damn but I'm going to play with you I'm going to play with you because yeah. I understand the intent of the question yeah appreciate that um and I'm going to go with oh god I'm going to go with Jimmy Hendrix oh, oh, oh that's, that's, that's not even a question you know it's my father raw, raw. saw him at a small club in Philadelphia in like 1960s I don't know when it was and like with a hundred and some people in the club my pick would be Queen. I would love to see Freddie Mercury and Queen back in the day. I love Queen, and I never saw Queen, so that was. I my love pick. Queen, dude. I love. I cried so hard for the Mercury movie. It was just yeah. stellar. Uh, and, uh, Queen's a good pick. Queen's a good pick. Yeah. So anyway. I, I, I Queen's love up there for me as well. I'd love to see Queen in like a small venue, like in a small room. You know, um, the uh, there's a band called Sylvan Esso, who uh, I really mm. enjoy. It's uh, it's electronic DJ paired with a folk singer and so what the, where their project does is they use obscure voice lines to explore her range and then she sounds like she's auto-tuned but it's all just her singing her, her mic's unmodulated but i saw her in a cost it must have been 100 people in the room it was a, a, a ticket i won and it was a magical experience and i've always thought in my head i was like man if you could just see queen in the room like this it, it would just it'd be unbelievable obviously you never can but um yeah, yeah. Anything that's going to make me sway, but especially stuff like that. There you go. There you go. Now they were they were one of those ultimate rock bands. I would have loved to. I, I would have loved to have seen Zeppelin, you know, live too. It was before my time when they were all together. I mean, there's there's a lot of bands that would John love Bottom to on to. drums, yeah. But but I what, think Queen. Would what have, about um? Would you have seen um? Oh God. Um. Would you have seen him? Um. Oh man. Um. Would you have seen him? Oh God. Do you know who I'm talking about? Would you have who? seen him solo in the '80s? Who? Who? I'm in the mood for a melody. I'm in the mood for a melody. I'm in the mood for a melody. I'm in the mood. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm talking about? Is Dude, he... put that. Hold on. Let me let me find out. Okay. Oh, Robert Plant. 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 Plant
he did that thing Coverdale. Uh, Coverdale. Well, that was, no, that was Coverdale like, Page. Yeah. My, yeah. I'll tell you what. My wife's stepfather, Jamie, building his dots in the garage, crushing beers. Loves <laughs> rock band. Loves. And this is not mine. This is in uh, Palo, Iowa. Shout out to Palo. I love you. Thanks for watching my kids last week. And Jamie, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that plug right there. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, yeah. Are I mean, you not a Morissette fan? Are you not an Atlantis Morissette fan? Oh, Andy hates him. No, hates no. Him. Todd loves though. They're, I don't mind look, look Morissette. This. He <laughs> loves <laughs> a lot. <of> <laughs> but he it. it is. Yeah. How can you not do that? Right? I mean, come on. No, I don't know. Look, just, that ready to go. In my top three, like artists that kind of make my skin crawl, Lance she's Morissette one would be one of them. Yeah. She's one of them. Um, she's out there too. I also don't like Jewel. <laughs> Say it yourself. I think the person on here, you got kids and stuff. Uh, I know. Like, yeah, no, they're, 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 they're okay. They're I think I'd rather take Jewel than, than Lance because. Oh, yes. Well, I, I just, know. I, I don't know. I, I, what was the last one? I, I take Jewel over Lonis. I can't. I can't handle. A, wow. Her voice is like. So here's the thing about Lonis Morissette. She was a Canadian pop singer before she turned into alt rock. And if you listen to her early stuff, she she's didn't alt rock. Sing, she oh, didn't sing, no, she wasn't alt rock. She was pop rock, and she didn't sing oh, that man. annoying like. Yes, and I run. Don't you think of uh, it? And she was just, and she changed completely, which <laughs> good for her. It made <laughs> it complete. Trevor. He gets a lot of looks like Kenny Lee. That's, that does kind of look like Kenny Lee. Look Kenny Lee. I look like Kenny Lee. If I, that is true. I don't know oh that's bad God, for me. I don't funny. know who that's bad for. Me, Alanis, or Kenny Lee. Probably all three of us. I Probably all three of you. It's bad for all three of you. He got the worst. Uh, no smell. Okay, time on your cigarette I, uh, I But so I love Rush. Rush to me, uh, I love Rush. Rush is great. Yes. Rush Alanis is fine. Is Rush is better than Alanis Morissette. Yes. Wait, well, I just can't. Hey, All right. Here's my la one of my last questions for you, uh, Nicholas. If you, you know, you, you've got a family run business, you, you've been in, you've, you've been doing this for a while. If you weren't in the sort of spirits industry, what would you be doing? What would I would you be, be making weed pens. I would be making <laughs> weed pens. A hundred percent. That's too close. Yeah, I'd be in, I'd be in medical marijuana. Yeah, no, I would be. I'd be in medical yeah. marijuana. There's money would, in that. Ooh, it's, that's it's, what I was doing before before the whole rum shot thing. That's where I was heading. Well, um, as soon as this state's legal, I'm right doing now. it. I, 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 I'm, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not about growing. It's not about smoking. It's, it's, it's the same it's it's similar process. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, there you go. You know, we've we've asked that question to a lot of distillers. We've never had that answer. No, I love because it. it's 420. Oh, I, I know it. I will be. In, I will be in that industry once it's legal in this state. Hopefully, you haven't missed the boom. Let me, right? Let you haven't missed the boom on that yet. I guess not. I know a you friend. Know what, you know a friend. It's not about it, but you know what, what? What we do really well is we process an ingredient. It happens to be grained alcohol, but when my team is able to process biomass mm -hmm. into marketable product for medicinal patients to utilize to for better palliative care, we are going to do that. It's not going to be at our yep. facility, not at our oh, yeah. DSP, but the idea, like right. my right. dream, is to co-locate a facility that scavenges lost resources from the other. So, like the things that we need to grow marijuana or even to process like because we don't I don't even want to grow, I want to process it. So I want people to bring it to me that they've already grown. We need carbon dioxide. So we're gonna harvest that carbon dioxide of our fermenters. We need heat. We can scavenge that off of our of our condensers. Um, we need nutrients. We can scavenge that from our stillage. It's a perfect processing bolt is a perfect outlet for all of our waste to become co-products and to truly truly create green products for our customers that close industrial loops and process loops. It's the sexiest thing in the world. That's what we're doing. We're doing it. So excited. Wisconsin Nick is might be 25, 30 years, but we're doing it. That, am, that would Saucy Shane's answer as well. I am <laughs> so excited to go to Wisconsin. You have no idea. <laughs> you might Hold be on up, dude. Nick, you might be there next let week. Me it's, it, it, let, let me tell you something. I, I know a friend, okay, uh, who looks like Anthony Santander, all right, who what? went to uh, the, the uh, dispensary around the corner. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dude, they're making a killing a mint it just got, it's just legalized here in maryland yeah. like last year and yep brother i'm in the wrong industry i gotta tell you <laughs> holy hell these guys are visionaries too, right oh, there's yeah. a lot of taxes there's a lot of overhead um, government's in yeah, it's a booming industry yeah but like an just industry. based on the fact that this is a it was, they had a parking attendant 
who was literally shifting people because of the overflow, how crazy it was. Oh, yeah. So, hey, yeah, retail is crazy. There's been beer that's been infused with CBD and stuff like that. Has there ever been a whiskey that's been infused with that kind of stuff too? People are or too no? afraid to do it because of, uh, because of, like, so like, we're like the big bad boy to us is the federal government. It's not state. And the Got federal, it. the TTB at any point in time will take everything. Got so it. Like, we, right. That's like, personally, that's why I, 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 yep. I have no involvement yep. whatsoever with marijuana at all. You know, is, is because, you know, at any point in time, they could come and they could take all of our inventory. They could take our 10,000 barrels and just gone, take everything. Yeah. Gone. It's it's to make you say, not no, yeah, no doubt about it. Got it. Better be safe. Than you'll there. see people start. You'll probably see people people start, but it's going to be NDPs. Got the it. problem All is right. going to be finding people that will handle the ingredients for you. Right. So like, a lot right. of me, like most Got people it. like me, like I want to, like I want to process for people. You want, you want what you want, rye whiskey, you want bourbon, you want a source bourbon, you want to make a liqueur for you, a cordial for you, a product right. for you, a brandy for you. We, we want to do that. We want to make alcohol for people. We want to c- create commodity and commercial alcohol for customers. That's what we want to do more so than selling on store shelves in a bottle. I want to sell to other companies. Right. But I'd never touch, I'd never touch it as an ingredient because they could take all my shit. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, there you go. The Wisconsin trail dancing goat, Jay Henry and Driftless Glenn. There you go. Holler. Those are my homies. I love all them. Um, Jay Joe is one of my best friends and then Driftless Sharpie's a good dude. Um, you know, they're, yeah, they've, they've paved the way here in Wisconsin and, we make some stellar. We make some stellar whiskey in no, Wisconsin, and no, especially rye. Would love for you guys right, to so try it. Here's a question for you, Nick. So yeah, what's up? Let's uh, let's say you're you come to Baltimore and you're Ooh. hanging out with us, yes. and uh, we head to a whiskey bar with no dancing goat is available. Mm. What are you sipping on? What whiskey do you go oh, to if you question. can't sip on a dancing goat whiskey? What do you say? Look, I, I just want a good pour. This what are you, what are you sipping on? And this is an extensive selection. This is anything that I want. Anything, anything you want, you want, dude. Anything, anything but dancing goat. Anything Can't you have that. Okay. Um, can we say this is a barbecue restaurant? Sure. Sure. I want old overhaul rye 100 proof with uh, with right. rendered beef fat. Nice. All right. I've got over, that, that's I, I have it. That's the only overhaul that I have. But I, I heard they have like what a good four, uh, over 14. I think is out. I haven't had any of that, but that one hundred. I haven't found it yet, but I, I'd buy it. But that be old overall with rendered beef fat is exceptional. exceptional. Oh, Pineapple Express too will feature Nick making whiskey and having the best MJ collection. People now man. listen. We're keeping things separate. We want Dancing Goat to live on. We're That'll separate. Be- we're separate for now. 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 All right. So l- l- all right. Let's take that. I like that answer. Now, now we're hanging out. There's no whiskey at all. You're Uh-oh. drinking some beer. What, what, Ooh, what? What's your go-to your beer? Ooh, um, mm. what just happened? Just listen. Wait, you, you, you're muted, Nick. I can't hear you. What just happened? Oh, did you mute? Hold on. It might be on our end. It's on our end, dude. I need him. I'm oh, yeah. There you go. There. Now you got it. That's right. my, uh, my headphones died. So if I'm like in my tree, if I'm like hunting or if I'm in my tree stand or if I'm playing pool with my homies or if I'm working in my garage on my tractor, um, it is straight up uh, rolling rock, tall boys, 100% old glass. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Oh, no. yes, sir. Our, oh. you're, you're our neck of the woods, man. That's not far from yeah, us. It's not far from us. Other than not that, Miller Light. Um, yeah. I do like, I, I do like, I do enjoy IPAs too. Um, or a nice sour, but usually like my go-to is, you know, if I'm, if I'm, you know, if me and the wife are trying to shoot for another kid or if I'm working on my tractor, yeah. it's, it's old glass <laughs> line for sure. Listen, we're trying around. not to have, we're not trying to have any more of those. That's the problem here. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. all you I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm, I got, I got one more coming in a couple months here. Oh, and that's oh God bless. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Thanks, yeah. It'll be three under three. So. Yep. Yeah. I have three boys. I have three boys, my three sons. So. I got two girls so far, so we'll see what this next one is. Yeah, but, yeah, oh, girl, boy, yeah, it's 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 that's it's an experience, man. That's awesome. Good for you, man. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank well, Andy, you. I think we established a couple of things tonight. One, Nick's amazing. Two, we have to get up to Wisconsin. Come on up. I what? think our patrons, our viewers, want us to be there. I think there's some some fun things we can do, and and I want to see you go hunting, raccoon hunting. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I'm all about it. Oh, I'll, I'll put you, you on them. We'll put a thumping on them. We'll build you a hat I, too. You want to have? 
Like, please videotape dude, all of that, Andy. So, you <laughs> got no idea how down I am. Yes. All right. I, I am so game for that. Is, is Jay West in for that? That's what I want to know. I don't Jay think Jay West. I, so I took so I took Jay West coyote hunting. Get out of here. I'm not even kidding. It was the cool, it was the coolest thing in the world. I got a uh, I got a hunt through a, a conservation, a guided hunt with the one of the best coyote hunters in the world is uh is from a conservation cherry auction. And um, and I just I explained it to him and I asked him, and he was like, you know not really wouldn't really yes i'll come I mean, he was like i don't think because it's, like, it's so not it's very much the opposite of like sitting in a deer stand in a tree and uh, so i took him and two other greenies out my boys bo and sean bo who's on here and then sean and we had a hoot and a half it was like three degrees freezing rain the whole time we had a hoot that is fantastic. he's coming and he said he'll come back with me again so we're gonna go again. I am but i don't think he's gonna go i don't think he's gonna go plink coons with us i think you're you're gonna be alone with me in a field with some waiters and we're probably gonna walk we'll walk i actually got a missed call on this thing from a farmer off of 73 right now that's calling me like where are you at because he thought i was coming over to kill some coons so what do you kill the coons what do you do with them depends on the time of the year right now you, you just you know you, you collect them and you dispose of them ethically oh, but uh, you can earlier earlier in the year during season you can you can rack them and stretch them you can sell them to a fur buyer if they wanted them <laughs> Yeah, because um, I don't want a raccoon hat. Do you? Oh, yeah. Do you, you hunt anything else, like deer or anything like that, or a fox or anything like that? A lot of fox. Went fox hunting for my deep for my bachelor party with Bo Sean and my brothers down in Texas. Um, coyotes mostly are my passion, um, and then right. deer, turkey, uh, duck, whatever. Dude, have, I'll, I'll have, you a deer? have you ever had eight sick of deer? Sick of deer? Uh, I've, heard have, of I've eaten sick of deer. I've not shot a sick of deer myself. Uh, but the best. I've I had eaten a it. delicious. Point. Uh, wrapped in bacon is the best thing I've ever ate in my life. Oh you, my god! You, 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 so, so, um, if you really like them sick of deer, uh, uh axis deer, you gotta try an oh. axis deer. All but right, you have an axis deer in, 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 uh, and they're they're infested an island in Hawaii. They were a gift from to King Kamehameha, and they've Got just overpopulated with no with no predators. So you can oh. go there, go hunt them. They're delicious, absolutely delicious. Great. Nice. Big well, thank you. Animals, so. You, uh, no, so do you, you eat the uh? The coyotes, if you take them out, do you, do I don't you eat think them? you eat coyote? Can you? No. I have no, eaten coyote before. I would not recommend it. Okay, <laughs> you know what I've ate I, I that I th is really is black bear. I had black bear, black, black bear, bears. so good. You go, baby. Yes. Oh, hey, look at that. So, yeah. Nick, I was, at a, I was at a Ravens tailgate. Guys, we tailgate with hunt big time, and I saw these steaks on the grill. I thought they were actual regular beef steaks, and I said, "Oh, that looks good. It smells good." He said, no, that's 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 a uh, black bear. And it was a spring hunt, so it just came out of hibernation, so it wasn't that fatty yeah. and tasted amaz uh, Butter, yeah, amazing. Amazing. Dude, amazing. Yes. I will raise you one. What? I was in Portland, Maine. Yeah. Okay. They had black bear tartar. Now, if you know what oh, tartar uh, is, uh, ooh, no. yeah. I did not have that. Okay. Oh. Careful, that, careful, that, trichinosis. You got to test yeah, that. You you know. to, like cook bear that's well. Basically, bear sushi. And you're supposed. Do, to, are you supposed to do that? I don't if know. You I, test it for, if it clears for trick, you're fine. I'm not. Oh, I'm, not okay. I'm not dead. I ate it. Well, you don't have to be scared of trick. You'd be like me eating squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, dude. It was really good. It was. It was absolutely fantastic. I, I had kangaroo tartar in in Australia. Oh, all right, that's cool. was it good. It was delicious. It was absolutely stellar. This uh, restaurant called Kakale. Shout out to Mindy. What's up, girl? I'm sending you them samples. There you go. She See, watch them, but she should be. It, it's funny, like what people eat in other parts of the, of the world. Because I mean, we're you know, it's over here. It's you know, we're we're, we're pretty stable. But if, if you own like those exotic game meat places, you can find you can find lion, giraffe, yeah. like all kinds of crazy stuff that people are eating. But anyway, yeah. hey man, right? I think this has been great. I think a lot of our viewers and Patreon members, Rice and Chipotle we, we've got to get up to dance and go. We've got to do something. I think kangaroo. We got to find something special stuff. to pick and really uh, add for maybe next year's uh, lineup of single barrel picks from two ten ninety. What do you think, Nick? I think that's something we can maybe look at. Andy's wants to get up there. To, yeah, we'd love to have you. Um, you know, we got a lot of crazy finishes. Got a lot of yeah. different species of wood that we finish in. Nice. We have our old whiskey, our own whiskey coming of age too. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities if you want to come up, taste some stuff, buy some stuff, have some fun, get down on some raccoons, you know, go go roll in the mud a little bit. We can have some fun. Sounds perfect. It's it's like a blast. I cannot I cannot wait. All um, right, guys. All right, well, wait, wait, last question. Oh, last question. Good. That's all right. Sounds out. 
You can take three mm. CDs, records, whatever you want to call them, with it, with you on a deserted desert island, but you only bring three. What are you bringing with you to listen oh, to? CD, well, C- C- CDs, CDs, records, whatever. I you know, we're old enough. <laughs> iPod, but but yeah, three, you get get three. What are you spinning? As Do you still have any CDs? Pondering? Do you still have any CDs left? I have okay. too many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would take. Um, I need some. The way I'm thinking about this is, I need I need some, some hip hop. I need some soul, and and I don't want to burn two picks. So I'm gonna go Bryson Tiller's his self titled album, his debut album, Capsule. Um, then uh, that would be one of them. Um, I'm gonna have to say. It's a toss up because I would really like to be able to hear when the levy breaks, but also um, mm. I can't commit to that album over yeah. another album that's going to fill the same kind of niche for me, that same kind of itch for me. Um, and it's really also hard for me. The same itch is scratched by Rick Astley. And I, <laughs> I just can't, never going to yeah. give, never going to, but I can't. No way. I, no way. I, nice. I would say. Yes. I would yeah. say Bryson, yeah, Bryson Tiller, um, and then also I would say Sylvan Esso's self-titled album, which gives me those same vibes. Yeah, um, and then uh, Fifty Duqua, yeah, one hundred percent. Who the heck? I don't know. Fifty. Who is that? I don't uh, even know that's who that is. The Yellow album. Oh, oh all my, right. Yeah. It gives because right. you because know, I'm on the desert. I need to work, so that means oh. I need to sway into work. You got to be off this damn island. Move. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm never helping. Help. I'm like going to help on the beach. I'm burning that thing, dude. I'm working. So he's he's basically Tom Hanks from. Cash That's what away. he is. That's what he is. You on the other hand, I was Wilson. 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 You have socks on your feet, so yes. you don't burn. Your well, feet. listen, I burn very easily. You, you know, do, you, you, you never want to burn he, your feet. He does wear socks. Will be. Tell me your feet. Feet. What no. are your three albums you're bringing? <sighs> Probably Appetite for Destruction because I just love Guns and Roses. Uh, poor, poor Cole. M- Motley Crue, Doctor Feel Good. Mm. Okay, that's a great album. And listen, I'm I, we're from Baltimore, and it's another hair band. I'm sorry, I'm not very diverse in my thinking, but it's the Kicks Hotwire. Okay, okay, yeah. left field, left like field, it. left field. Like yeah, what are you? Andy? You're Def Leppard, Def Leppard, Def Leppard. No, no, no. I, I don't think that's fair. I'll I'll go. It's got to be one Def. It's it's hysteria. I can't pick between Hysteria and Pyromania, so I'll just do Vault, their greatest hits. Oh, that's so a cop-out. Okay. Right. It's is a cop-out, but I'll but It I'll is such it. a cop-out, dude, but I'll take it. I can't pick between the two. All right. You know, if I had to pick one of the two, I think I'd pick Hysteria. Yeah, you would. That's, All right. that's an honest pick, answer. I, I think I'll pick Hysteria. All right. Uh, number two. Um, <laughs> damn, that's hard. I, you know, he, you want to laugh at me? I think one of my three would be even now Barry Manilow. I would take that. I, just because I, I got, I got, so I got so He down. loves Barry Manilow. Yep, I tell, I What's up, Chief? Hope you're feeling good. better, buddy. And then for my last one, uh, I, I think I might do... I don't like him now, but I liked him back then. I think I might do Bon Jovi, New Jersey. Bon Jovi, okay. New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That, that album is... Can I ask a question of you guys? Yeah, man. Yes, let's go. Let's bring them. Okay. Okay, since we talked about her, you got to give me your Taylor Swift era or song. Uh oh. No, oh, Todd, you're gonna struggle with this. I'm a huge fan of the 1980. I don't have any album. girls. I, like, like, I don't know any of these songs. This I is like a problem. I'm a fan of of 1989. I like Welcome to New York. I like Bad mm-hmm. Blood into the Woods. Like, about Shake I, It Off. I, I like Shake, Shake It Off. Is also Shake It Off. Trust. Shake It Off. From the I know it from the the movie Sing. So Shake It Off. There you go. <laughs> okay, I, I accept. I accept those answers. I, I, are I do. We, we do listen to Taylor. So I let you know Cruel Summer and everything. When I take her to school, we switch off. Like so, I take her to school in the morning. We'll we'll spin some old rock tunes and the next day we spin some Taylor tunes and so we, we kind of go back and forth so it's fun so Love I get it. I get that kind of cross generational thing which is fun. Dude, I go but, personally. Yeah. I go deep on that one. I would go to her her last country <laughs> album. Probably oh, one of my, one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs is uh is um Love Song Love Story. Do you know Love Romeo you take want- me somewhere we can be alone. You know? Song you be the prince cool. and I'll be the princess. Oh, it's Andy, a love, love story. story. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey yeah. and you want to hear something? Great? Daddy said, "Stay away from Julia." No, I'm dying on the inside, begging you, please don't go. You want to play this so bad? What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Yes. Okay, you want a really good one? <laughs> look, look it up. VH1. Um, 
Crossroads. Def Leppard, my favorite band, played with Taylor Swift, and mm. Joe Elliott sings with her love story, and they do it together, and it actually is phenomenal. So you Dude, that's Brad, your homework. Brad, look up, look sounds, up that Taylor actually Swift. sounds rad. Taylor I will check that it's, out. They, they they did each other's songs uh together and it was it was phenomenal. Oh, it was Kathy really, Gray's really favorite Taylor Swift song is Don't Blame Me. And, and I know she's a big fan of Don't Blame Tim McGraw by Gang. That's another one that, that that is a good Taylor song. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I gotta respect the hell out of her. What she's nice doing Lance. is here's the only thing I don't like about Taylor Swift. I think Travis Kelsey's a jackass. That's just my yes, personal opinion. But, we hate him. Uh, in ba- uh, we hate him. Uh, other than we that, hate him. We I hate got, him. I got to give the girl credit for making something. Mean, she's doing what no one else could do. Man, she's making her money. She's a billionaire. Look at this. Her. This is the best thing. Today, bro. Anthony was lukewarm. I don't know why you're lukewarm before this interview, but fully on board now. Well, that's what we want to do. I, I don't think you hey, you've hey, tried it. Anthony, I appreciate that, bro. Anthony's great. He's local. Anthony, I'm telling you, if you try any of these, you're going to be hooked in a second, dude. It's fantastic stuff. And look, look at Richie Z. Crossroads episode of Def Leppard Joe Swift is great. It's on DVD. Ah, See, there you go. There you stuff. go. There there you go. Do you want a little bit? talking like Crossroads, like Bone Thugs and Harmony? Talking about the Crossroads, you won't be lonely. Crossroads, you won't be lonely. I'm going to miss everybody. And I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> Dude, we're going to play in some music too when I go to Wisconsin. Dude, oh, you have to. Oh, we're jamming. Yeah, the whole day. We're jamming. The oh, whole no, day. I haven't missed that though. LP. That Thriller album was the first album I ever bought. Oh, Thriller. That's phenomenal, dude. I, I absolutely, that was the first album I bought. Diary of Mad Man. Shout out. I remember going to, do you remember the name? Waxy Maxies? You remember? Oh, Waxy Maxies. CDs. So I, we got CDs from Waxy Maxies. So I Maxis. went there. I remember taking $12 and pulling the Thriller album up at the counter. My first time I ever pulled the money out of my wallet to buy an actual vinyl. And I was like, here you go. And it was just. You still have that vinyl? That might be worth something now. Uh, you probably don't. I don't. I don't. No, I don't. Have, don't. I, I have. Don't. A, no, actually, I do have his. I do have the Thriller CD uh, um, vinyl back home. I have a whole record collection. I have a bunch of vinyls. Andy back home. Jerry says his favorite Taylor Swift song is "Portion of Sugar on Me." Did she sing that? She did that with with uh, with uh, Def Leppard. Yeah. Oh, all right. But, but there you go. Yeah. So I think is your funny. Rye a six year pick? W- which one are you talking about, Mark? Is your uh, yes? It is from Steelbacks. Uh, that's the yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Steelbacks. Yes. That's, that's, that's it is a six year. It's a beautiful board. So really that good. was done with uh, Drew P from the from the, uh, Drew the P show. Look at the color, um, Jesus! He picked that and then he stopped podcasting after, so it went to Seal Box. But um, oh, he, well, uh, he 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 loved it. that. He called it his lemon curd bomb. Hot yeah. holler to, to Drew P. He's if you guys don't know Drew P. Um, Drew P. Whiskey. Um, he he stopped yeah. podcasting for some personal reasons, but he's he's a stellar in, dude. Ridiculous palate. Nice. And a friend, who I love. <laughs> Dude. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Look, we love to hang out with people who've got good pals. It just helps us a little bit. But uh, yes. yes, Mark, it is. Fe- yes, French, French Road Finish. Finish. Yes. yes, fantastic. I think Mark might have the same bottle. I think he's getting to the same thing. Yes, it's a Silbacks pick um, from a, probably a year or so, ago, more than a year ago. And it's probably. probably a little over a year ago, but yeah, yeah. but I mean, it was it was just just really good stuff. And that was kind of like I said, I cut my teeth on this one, and I just I just kind of fell in love with dancing. Good. So, of which yeah. I, I do have to ask this. I think it's a fun story. Uh, I did read this uh, online, but Nick, tell tell the people how the name Dancing Goat even oh, came. Oh yes, this is a good story. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> we were uh, we were we were in New Glarus looking at a property, and um, we were on a tour, and we took a, a tour of an old brewery, uh, the old New Glarus Brewing, the, uh, New Glarus Brewing Company brewery in town and uh it was an interesting piece of property to us because um it, it came with a lot of infrastructure boilers in place tanks in place um so it's just, it's just from an infrastructure standpoint it really stood out and uh if they've already been doing process in there it can turn on sooner than six months so it's very mm-hmm. learning to us toured it went through there with the partner of mine and he was like all right what are we gonna do and i was like all right cool so we're gonna put a smokestack here had a column in it bring a pot still in here need some fermenters. We'll sell these tanks, upgrade these tanks, leave these steam lines in, you know, all, all these boilers are staying, boilers are staying cool. And um, at the end of it, he's like, so, so what are you guys doing? And what do you want to make in here? You making cheese? And I was like, no, we're making whiskey. We'll call you. And we called them the next day and it was no longer for sale. And now there's a distillery in that building owned by them. That mm. looks very much like what I said we were going to do. Really? Yeah, and you know, and I was 25, 26 at the time. Oh wow. Um, and I was a total idiot. And so, like, I had said to my dad and my boy that I was like, Hey, screw these guys, let's put them out of business. We'll own, we'll take over their their brewery 
you know, yeah. and then they have a brewery too, and then we'll sell their we'll sell their beer in Illinois. <laughs> you know, which, like to them, like would be just like <gasps> it's like the, yeah, the, right. the stake in the heart. And right. so um obviously that didn't happen. We ended up in Cambridge, <laughs> but uh in my haste to to for vengeance. I, uh, I I did look at a property in, in New Glarus proper, and it was an old mini golf course. And on this golf course, when we went to go take a look at it, there was a bunch of goats that were left behind to, to keep the grass mowed, I guess. Get and so we were sitting there, me and my dad and this guy, Travis, and we were talking about, all right, Nick, well, what are you going to do? It's like, all right, we have to build it up out of the floodplain. It's going to be really expensive. We have to add another egress to it um, so we can get a turnaround for trucks in here. We need a, we're going to hide a column and smokestack, same thing. Um, we need, we need about, you know, at least another 1500, you know, maybe 2000, 2500 square feet minimum for what we want to do. That'd be really, 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 really small. And, um, but I was like, okay, great. And we're going to level the mini golf course. And I was like, absolutely not Think <laughs> of middle of the winter. You come here and the tasting room is literally a mini golf course. We'll put heaters out there, a glass roof on top of it. Heat it so that. you can be outside in the winter playing mini golf, drinking your yeah. own fat. And it was, oh, yeah. you know, we were like, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah. And then we realized how expensive it was to build something <laughs> else, which is ridiculous. And so, scrap that uh, idea. Scrap that idea, right? But while we were there, the goats kind of bonded with my father. So they they started to approach us and they stuck their head through the gate. Not through the gate, but through the fence. And man, they're just bonding at us like crazy. <laughs> and uh, so it always stuck with us. We wanted to do something with goats. So then uh, we get to Cambridge. and. Um, we submit our plans to build. And at this point in time, we're, we're trying to figure out how do we include goats into our, into our business. And um, at this point, we we're going to be called the Cambridge Stealing Company, which we didn't for other reasons. I get to that story later. Um, but uh, we did. So the name wasn't an option. And so what we said was to honor my grandmother and to celebrate her. Cause we're a celebration company. Everything we do is in honor of somebody. And yep. so to celebrate my grandmother, we're going to put sod on the roof for goats to eat. Um, and the goats could live on the roof because my grandmother grew up in an A-frame sod roofed house in, in Bergen, Norway. And so, um, wow. So we, our engineer for a prefab building called a restaurant here in Door County, a uh, really famous restaurant called Al Johnson's. Al Johnson's has goats on the roof and, um, Door County is kind of like our, how do I explain this to y'all? It's kind of like our bay. It's, okay. You know, it's it's a holiday destination. It's it's a place where people go to to cut mm -hmm. loose and relax. It's actually Green Bay is around is near there, right? Wow. Um, okay. So mostly on the lake, beautiful deep woods, um, yeah. cabins, Geneva esque kind of in that vein. Yes, very much Geneva, Geneva, the Northwoods Geneva, okay. if you would. Right. right. Yep. Um, All right. A beautiful place, and um, uh, and so we had um, Al Johnson's. Said, yeah, oh, oh, you want to do, oh, you want to do what? Oh, you want to put goats on the roof? That's so cute. Yeah, it's a great idea. Said, Who are you again? Where are you? What's your <laughs> okay, click, goodbye. And they sent oh, us no. a cease and desist letter. So my brother is a pharmaceutical patent litigation attorney. So my brother gets paid to hold spineless pharmaceutical CEO execs accountable in depositions. And it's, it's akin to like putting, uh, putting a, somebody in the room with a caged pit bull, right? It's just very... He and I'm very. I have a lot of confidence in my brother's capabilities, right? He's sure. he's done some really amazing things for the United States, especially recently with painkillers um, and and some of that stuff. So I am very confident in his ability to ruin people's day legally, right? <laughs> oh my older brother, and I'm oh, like, hey, these yeah. dudes are thumping with us, and we got to put some smacking on them. And he looks at it, and he's like, yeah, you're gonna let this one go. And I was like, the what the fuck you mean? I'm gonna let it go? What do you mean, dude? Like we gotta put the goats on the roof? It's gonna be great. And he let me know that Al Johnson's has sued every commercial business in the United States oh. that has ever tried to put goats on the roof, and they've won. So they actually have precedence oh. in the United States court law uh, that's considered what? their IP, their trade dress. No court, no company, no commercial business will ever have goats on the roof other than Al Johnson's. What? Are you yeah, kidding me? Dude, that's bizarre. Bizarre. Biz Are you kidding me? Dude, like, I got like the I got like the Purdue lawyer, dude, and I can't crack this case. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. What's going <laughs> on, dude? Like, yeah. you got the Sacklers and you can't get them. Come on, dude. But um, anyway, dude, yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy. So so then we're like, well, we need these goods. So by then I'd already bought a goat for the roof. Of course, we named it Ramchata. And um uh Ramchata <laughs> was uh, 
a Nigerian dwarf, and um, she was up in Montello. <laughs> Montello is a is a really beautiful small hunting village with a drinking problem. That's the t-shirt they sell in their in their main uh, gas station town. And so I, I had this this goat up there. I had a few goats, and um, I decided I was like, okay, well, we're going to take the goats and we put them in a petting zoo adjacent to the facility. And my yeah. grand plan was so my goats they're 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 escape artists. They love to get out. They're very <laughs> playful. And so uh, our deal was we were going to build them a structure out of pallets, and then we were going to fence it, high fence them in, and then they'd have trees to climb. They could climb the pallets, but they couldn't get over the barbed wire. They'd be safe. They wouldn't get eaten by coyotes. We're all good. And um, I went to go get that cleared with the village. Well, pff, too bad, Nicobod Crane. Commercial businesses <laughs> in the village limits of Cambridge will not not for that. Because it constitutes a petting zoo, which is banned in the village. Oh, God. So Ramshada died in peace up in Montello. We paid for her to be comfortable. And uh, <laughs> and she made it a couple more years. She was never turned into any type of meat or gyro. Yeah. And I'm very proud yeah. of that. That's right. going to be before I bought but her. you named your distillery Dancing Goat. Yes. So a friend of ours then said, you know, I know this is the track you're on. It's a noble path. If you need to incorporate it, make it the name. There you and, go. Uh, he suggested dancing goat because he loves to watch me dance. And as you know, I like to sway. That uh, like is sway. amazing. So what oh. I like to say is uh, we're goats. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We're here to get down to business. And when life gives us a tin can, we make a meal out of it. I love that ethos. That man. Dude it is awesome. Guys, in the chat, how can you not love this? I, I am instantly hooked. You're yeah. a treasure, Nick. Nick, you are yeah, a treasure. A you are a treasure. Hey, you, you think that's a crazy story, Nick? Todd, what? Tell Nick, yes, about the origin of two ten ninety. How we got our name? <laughs> yeah, it's not nearly as cool. No, as it's an amazing story. Are you ready for this, Nick? I you am ready. ready. I'm, I'm hanging on every word. I can't <laughs> wait. This is, this is this is freaking crazy. But yeah, this is a true story. Todd, yes, tell him about how two ten ninety came about. So we live, Nick, uh, literally about a mile away from each other. The zip code of where we live is two one zero nine zero. Which is two ten ninety. But we decide to spell the ten. That's how cool we are. T E N. How badass I mean, is how that? Bad I mean, is you that? can't get more creative. I mean, your story was good, but that, that is, that's, that's another level. That's is another just, level. That's, just, yeah. that's another level right there. Can yeah. I be completely honest with you guys? We yes. suck. So we you suck. know, no, you don't suck. You're so far from sucking. <laughs> and I, I'm here with like a, an Anabaptist like beard telling you you don't suck. You know, okay. all right. <laughs> um, the, the the logo behind you, the two ten ninety behind you. Yeah, I did not actually realize read that as two ten ninety. I read that as Stendo, S T E N D O, <laughs> and I thought I thought in my head I was like, wow, these guys are huge triple extension fans. I was like, that's crazy. I was like, I thought these guys were rock fans, like they're big no, extension is, fans. Like, is, is the is the Def Leppard font? for 21090 that's the death of the fun now, no, now i see it i see it now but i thought it was a i thought it was an, an un, unveiled reference to uh look, to extension so i have a book stendo where's the fun for you guys i got a lot Dude, of weird, that, that, that that was a new nickname that's <laughs> that is a great nickname we have, awesome. we have to make, make a shirt of that we have to make a shirt of that stendo, stendo. <laughs> stendo. yes <laughs> i love it guys if you had as much fun as we had i mean this is this is a good night this is a good night. Nick, we can't thank you enough. Uh, anything, so what's coming up from, from Dancing Goat, not to, to wrap it all up, but we've got the 10 year of this beautiful rye that I'm telling you is a thing of beauty. We've got the triple box, uh, or not box, but triple set over at uh, Shared Pour that's available right now, get it before it's gone. What else do we have coming out this year? What, what's on the plate for, for Dancing Goat? Um, we got a, we got a, a... Like I said, everything is done for a reason at the Dancing Goat. Um, every stupid name, every dumb poem on the back of a bottle. Um, and we have a new release that's going to come out soon called Tommy's Malted Bang Dog. And mm. um, it is uh, it is an homage to my father. So my father loved this one blend we did of 100% malt. Uh, it was actually 85 Brewer's Malt, 15 Caramel Pilsner Malt with our, our um, Quirky and Humble Bourbon. And uh, so oh. that's 21% rye from MGP. Um, the, the name itself, he, he always brought up, he's like, what about that malted? What about that malted? What about that malted? And it kind of became this like, oh yeah, Tommy's malted banger. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And eventually I got to it and it's pretty good. 
Um, but uh, we we did the blend. We finished it in in some uh, toasted barrels, and uh, it's it is really good. It's super creamy, a lot of depth to it. Uh, seventy five percent bourbon, twenty five percent malt, um, and then mm -hmm. and then rested uh, at cast strength. So that'll come out. Uh, ever since my dad hit it hit it big, and by hit it big, I mean retired from Jim Beam, and we started Rochata <laughs> and sold out the backseat of our cars. Um, yeah, he he only wore tan zip off at the knee tan gray cement colored zip off at the knee cargo pants and, Nothing wrong with that. and you were, like, yeah really light blue pfg rimshada branded fishing shirts and now that he doesn't own rimshada anymore he actually had to go buy his own pfgs because he still wears them <laughs> and so awesome. the, the presents awesome. label on that one similar to the one in the middle where, where you have the quirky humble with the red on the cream we did blue on cream in honor of him and then uh, we 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 put a little bit of uh, fun in our poem form there, and so it's going to be out That's around great. Father's Day for fathers. Hey. Um, it's, Ooh, it's a gift for my yeah. father to everybody. We'll also have I would ride for you two coming out. Um, uh, probably another quirky and humble blend. And, yeah, so we have quite a lot. We have quite a lot yeah. coming, um, and we're really excited. And if you're not in your distribution area, which is mainly around the Midwest, look for Sealbacks or Shared Pour, the online vendors, the normal ones we would go for, right? Yep, seal box and shared pour. They pretty much they both get all of our releases. Um, shared pour gets more seal box. We'll probably do a couple single barrels with that'll be pretty crazy this year. Um, yeah. you know, we we do really love those guys, but we work with shared pour a lot. Nice. Yeah. We, we love, we love yeah. 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 We, we're, we're with you on that. We're with you on that. Yeah, we do a lot of our, we do all of our single barrels yeah. through Jay. So he's, he's, Jay. he's a good dude, man. So no, nah, that that's good stuff. That's awesome. You know, I get to sit with him quite a bit. We do a lot of blending together, and uh, I man, that guy's that guy's just something else, man. I don't know so, anyone who drinks as much whiskey as he does, and I got ten thousand barrels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's funny. He's I call Jay, man, dude. Have you ever dude, seen we, him? Do you know what he looks like? Yeah, we've met him. We, yeah, we, we've met him. Yeah. We went up to we went up to yeah. DC. We we we, we yeah. stopped in. We talked to him for a while. Sure. And I've been on our show before. I called him about two weeks ago before you were coming on. I said, "Hey, man, like let's let's get the scoop on Dancing Goat and the whole night." Because I talked to him about that chocolate bitters barrel finish, and he said, "Get to know Nick and the guys. Yeah. They are awesome." Because yeah, he, he actually he said, "He, he said I'll go up with yes. you." When you go, if you go up to Wisconsin, he says it's worth it. He said, "We'll we'll paint the town, and we'll have so a good Jay's, time." Madison. Jay's in so, for when Andy comes so, up. So, dude, awesome. man, we'll make this a party, brother. We'll have a good time, man. I can't, I can't, I can't. How far are you, by the way, from Delavan? Just out of curiosity, like Delavan, Delavan is where all of my corn comes from. Oh, okay. Delavan, all of our corn is grown in in and around Delavan, that East Troy area, of Delavan. We're about forty-five to ninety awesome. minutes, depending on where you want to be. Yeah. Delavan. No, that's nothing. So Andy I, has yeah, business. I, I have business out there, dude. I, I we can make that happen. It's gonna nice. be fun. What know. do you do in Delavan? <laughs> we'll talk offline. Yes, we'll talk offline. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, it's it's I, yeah. 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 The ads that we work with the adsits who are huge farmers in in Delavan, I, East Troy, that whole area. Yeah, man. No, Shout no, out to Graham. I love that. you, Grammy. Yeah. This, right, is, and, this has been a guys, good time, man. Awesome I, I, time. We can't thank you enough, Nick. It was a great time. Guys, chat, you had a good time. Yeah, Dancing Goat, guys, a lot of good things. Inling Travel. That, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, more things. <laughs> Stay tuned for, you know, we'll certainly, we're a big advocate for what you do, Nick, and we're, we're happy to promote what you do because, like you said, your ethos is right in line with what we want. And uh, You like that word, don't you? I do. I think it's appropriate. Well, you only know a handful of big words. That's ethos true. Will be one of them. Shut up, Andy. Andy. That's he a, he I, also exactly. knows bloviate is not one of the big words. That is, I do bloviate a lot. That's yes, fun. He knows that's that. all good. He's really good at it. <laughs> that's right. There you go. See, see, I like, I like it. Uh, Nick, hang around for two seconds. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna yes. end this thing. If you don't mind, guys, just, we'll see you next Tuesday uh, for yeah. Andy's birthday. Andy's birthday is next week. So happy um, birthday, Andy. Yeah, hey, you know. thanks. My God, can you imagine twenty eight? That's just twenty eight. Can yeah. you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> 28 yeah right he wishes 28 uh, times all right guys whatever. we'll see you next week and uh andy you're gonna uh, sign us off on something anything we're gonna do what do you think uh nick would like to see, Let's see. you know what nick would probably like to see three right. years ago when i was just getting whiskey when you gave me a, a fake list of whiskey uh that was our whiskeys of the year i didn't know much about whiskey three years ago uh nick uh, I was a beer guy, Actually, and all I do is brew that, beer. That's that's fair enough. And so Andy gave me. I said, Andy, we got we're going live. I said, what are our top whiskeys of 2022? And he gave me this fake list that I went and put out on the internet. And wait till you see this. This is actually kind of funny, guys. We'll see you next roll week. It, Stick it, around.
appreciate you, man. And uh, Stick, no, don't go anywhere. Yeah, let's, watch let's, this let's, too. let's watch Todd. Oh no, it's being, so bad. Being it's Todd. so bad. See you next week, people. Excellent. Okay, what you guys are all waiting for tonight on our live stream, our members only giveaway is something very special. We are giving away our top five whiskeys of 2020 to a lucky winner. Those are going to be the Knob Creek 12 Year Select, the uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Ride, the Rare Breed Masters Tier 17, the Old Crow Double Barrel 47, and then the Maker's Marks P90X. All absolutely amazing bourbons that you can't find easily that Andy has. One lucky member will get it. So we can't wait to see you tonight, 8.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, we'll have some fun. Cheers. I'm at the beach. That's where the live stream will be.